Right, hello and welcome back to the 2012 Web Diplomacy World Cup Final, longest game of diplomacy ever. We are now, I think, eight hours in, <laughs> and about a fifth of the way through the game itself. Um, it's been a little while since the last episode. Uh, the reason for that is because Ezio, who is here with me, hi Ezio. Hi. Um, was away on holiday a couple weeks ago, and then I, last week... Well, last weekend, played in the DBNI, the Diplomacy Broadcast Network Invitational Face-to-Face -face Tournament, and I soloed. And that has no relevance to this whatsoever, but I felt like saying it because it was a pretty intense competition, and solos aren't something that happen very often. Yeah, the relevance is that you weren't able to record last weekend. That was, the, that was what got us in here. It's totally fine. Yes. Uh, I just happened to mention this at the same time. Uh, it was great. It was a great feeling, though. Um, so I'm also. This also means that I'm in the finals for that tournament, which will be on the 27th. Hang on, let me check that I've got my dates correct. Yep, um, the 27th of February. So if you are around on that weekend, head on over to the Diplom the Diplomacy Broadcast Network's YouTube channel, and you can see them commentate my play again. Hype. Anyway, back to this game. When we left off in winter 1920, we had an interesting situation. The German had just about recovered from their uh, pirate situation of, of being <laughs> stuck in the sea. Um, by well, Austria controlling Munich and then walking into Berlin at one point, I believe. That was beautiful, yeah. Um, but right at the end, I believe that France and Germany had made up. France had helped Germany get his centers back. And then you had, right at the end, this kind of mega alliance in the north, where none of them are attacking each other. Um, in fact, I can turn back the phase here and show uh, that they bounced in Baltic, bounced in Norwegian, almost certainly arranged, and everything else held. That's all that happened in the north. Um, whereas in the south, <laughs> it's just a complete mess of everyone being at war with each other, uh, with the Austrian being very lucky to survive on one supply center right now. Uh, and that's where we left off. We're now in winter 1920. Let's go ahead and move into the spring of 1921. Have a look at what happened here. Ezio, anything you want to point out right off the bat? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is that France is in a Um Which is making all of my alarm bells go off. <laughs> yep. Because, like... If I remember correctly, like, 15 years ago, France was at, like, 14 centers, looking like they were going to solo. Um, and when someone looked like they were going to solo earlier in the game, and then has a fleet on the opposite side of the Stanley line, or two, depending on how you count Ionian, suddenly, I would just assume France is going to solo, but oh, I don't know. This sport looks weird. I have no idea. Like... There's so few units in the north, I feel like France should be able to solo, but I have no idea. Yeah, like, it, French fleet in a G unit is huge. <laughs> Usually uh, of any western power that gets the Ionian, well, I mean, France is more likely to get to the Ionian than any of the rest of them, but they would get stopped there and then because that's already a huge threat. Getting into the Aegean <laughs> is well past the stalemate line. I think the big difference here, though, is that usually France, when they're this big, um, is relatively uncontested in the north on fleet power, right? You would probably have an even number to the amount of fleets that's there from other powers, whereas here we've got two French fleets in the north and five other fleets. <laughs> so they don't have as clear a path to running over the rest of the board as they usually would. Yeah, absolutely. Their path would need to be some weird army fight in the north involving Ruhr, because you're right, while France doesn't have nearly the fleet majority, Germany doesn't have many armies either. So if you control Ruhr and Munich and stuff, maybe you can capture the lowlands that way and disband some of those German fleets. Yeah, I guess that would be the way to go. Um... I mean, Germany does have armies, they're just <laughs> headed so far south that they wouldn't be relevant. Well, they're not that far south so far, but it's really hard to get back up through Munich if you've got... if you have to call them back. 
Um, yeah, especially if there's a French with control of rear. That can really, really slow down your advancements. Yep. Uh, so, looking at the north, the only units that actually move, there, there's obviously these arranged bounces, there's a lot of holds. Uh, Munich attempts to move south, but doesn't manage it. And Burgundy goes to Marseille here, and that's about it. Um, yeah, so depends more on what you call Bohemia. I, I'd say Bohemia counts as the north, but... Yes. Bohemia moves south into Vienna with Austrian support, which is interesting because we've got this truce between uh, Russia and Germany. I assume maybe Russia just offered that willingly, given that Vienna is backed out. Um, but yeah, probably is in favor of now. Germany will support whole Trieste. Um, yes. But... Interestingly, Turkey this turn could have taken Trieste, right? If Turkey attacks Trieste with support from Serbia, has Adriatic Sea support Serbian to Trieste specifically? Yeah. Right? Yep. But I guess through negotiations, Turkey decided Austria was better off in Trieste. Okay. It seems that way. I mean, it, yeah, Turkey is under attack from the Russian here, right? They don't have well if they went into Trias with that army, they don't really have enough to protect Bulgaria slash Greece. Um, so they seem to be better off with that unit as part of their line, but they did lose Serbia anyway, so uh, despite it being quite easily holdable here. Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, I really don't understand this, because if Turkey thought that Austria was going to attack them by supporting Russia into Serbia, then presumably you want Adriatic Sea to tap Trieste while Bulgaria supports Serbia. And if you think it's not going to do that, then you can just support hold Serbia anyways. Right? Yeah. But... I wonder if um, maybe Turkey thought that Ukraine would be heading to Galicia or something, so by tapping Romania like this they were either forcing Sevastopol to hold or um, or taking rum. But even though, yeah, the only reason you would go in with well, yeah, no, it just seems like a bad move, Serbia to Romania on the whole here. Um, even without the benefits of hindsight, it, it seems... Yeah, not great. Um, another thing to bring up over here, I think the main other interesting thing that happened is you see this Northern Alliance isn't exactly in harmony with France supporting Apulia up to Venice despite Germany trying to take it. What do you make of that? I think that France thinks Italy is their number one friend in this game, which is probably accurate. Italy supports them in Ionian and has supported them in the past. Um, so I'm pretty sure France understands that Italy is the most important country for them on the stalemate line. And if France's path to soloing this game is through the south rather than the north, which is odd but potentially viable in this, he wants some Italian support here. Yeah. Yeah, that's very reasonable. If you get a small nation on side like this, you manage to get your units past them and into those centers like somehow Trieste or Greece or into the Turkish centers, you can always mop up the Italian centers afterwards. You, you kind of just want to keep them on side to keep pushing your fleets through. Um, but yeah, so it seems like they decided that... Uh, it was much better to have Italy as a friend than to put Germany into another center. We'll see whether that comes back to bite them at all. Um, shall we move ahead to the fall here? Let's do it. Okay, fall 1921. <laughs> well, that Italian uh, alliance didn't last very long. <laughs> Ouch. So yeah, that's yeah. rough. <laughs> Both Naples and Venice get taken here, um, and only one of them can actually retreat because Apulia is the only center open. But it is, of course, a stamina fall turn, so it doesn't matter a ton that only one of them can retreat. Um, <laughs> one of them is going to have to come off the board anyway. Germany is plus two, right? Germany goes plus Vienna plus Venice, yeah. That's a the strong result for him, and despite stabbing Italy for this, 
France only goes plus one out of it. Um, feels like it might be a mistake, given that, uh, I mean, Germany, you don't really want to be creating a super strong Germany as, as France here, right? Especially with Burgundy being your only defensive unit uh, on your mainland. Yeah. With a build, it's, it's more reasonable, but even, I completely agree. I, I think Italy was a more valuable ally than Germany, but there's all, this is a public press game, and so there's probably public pressure on Germany to be like, look, if you're not trying to solo, you have no need to keep Italy alive, and if you are trying to solo, we need to stop you. So either support me into Venice, or we're going to kill you. Yeah. Pretty that, reasonable tactic. That makes sense. And of course, you've also got that this was draw size scoring, so there'll be pressure on everyone to cut the smaller powers anyway if they're planning to draw. Um, yeah, but notably no time limit, so you can cut whatever you want. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I still don't think they were expecting the game to go forever, even at this point, but. Um, I think we'll they, see. I completely agree. Also, it's interesting that France used the GN to support hold Bulgaria. Yeah. Oh, wait, did he not? Yeah, yeah. just the GN support to hold Bulgaria. I, I don't particularly get it. Um, well, I mean, given Bulgaria was moving out, that's... <laughs> yeah. It's particularly weird because Bulgaria's moving out, but even still, like, you want to... You're trying to slow down Russia from killing Turkey... Is that the like that? That's really the objective here. Seems to be the objective. I mean, maybe we know that Russia and Germany have been tight all game. We don't really know about Russian French relations. They have been, They were fighting for quite a long time before this um, truce broke out in the north. Uh, so it's very possible there's an alliance in the north, but there's a proxy war going on in the south. Of you know, you you need to be advancing slower than I am. Especially yeah, with, I mean, like, Germany taking Vienna. Uh... Yeah. That's reasonable. I just, I don't know. My fleet, when I have a French fleet in the Aegean, I am not going to be supporting Turkish units. <laughs> like, that's, just, that's just not going to be happening. I'm going to be taking Turkish centers. That's, like, why I have a fleet in the Aegean. That's generally true no matter what country I am, to be honest, but, like, I'm France. Give me those dots. Yeah, especially, like, looking at this, instead of stabbing Italy, France could have supported themselves into Greece and successfully taken it, which feels yeah. like the better move by far. You don't even have to give up Tyrrhenian Sea to do that, or Ionian. You can just rotate Tuscany through to Tyrrhenian, Tyrrhenian through to Ionian. Um, Absolutely. I think, I like the way that looks much more than having, taking Naples from Tyrrhenian, because remember now, Rome is going to have to retreat somewhere, and if you take Rome in the spring, you're going to have to cover Tyrrhenian and Naples. So, like, cleaning up that last unit in Rome is going to take three units a bit. Now, again, this game shows us tempo doesn't really matter at all, and as long as the unit in Rome dies, it's going to die, but, like, I don't know. Feels slow. Yeah. Yep. Um... I mean, other interesting thing of note here, the uh, the Austrian unit deciding to tap Serbia uh, instead of taking the support holds that were offered from Turkey and Italy. Um, could have saved Venice if he had returned that support hold. But maybe the Turk offered him support into Serbia, or maybe he just didn't want to let the Russian grow too much. Still feels like a dire situation for him. Yeah... If there was support into Serbia, though, Austria would have gotten a build. You would have done, yep. Um, there wasn't even, like, you'd expect maybe Vienna to do a gentle tap of Trieste if that was offered in global just to ensure that nothing was built there. Although maybe maybe Germany wants to see an extra Austrian army, especially, oh, well, an extra Austrian fleet would be very nice. <laughs> but um, God, if they built a fleet... <laughs> one fleet, one army, Austria choosing that position. Good God! I mean, playing the long game, it worked for Germany, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think Germany didn't go all in enough, right? Also, the North is a slightly different tactical, strategic position from 
the Balkans. <laughs> yep. When your centers are Trieste and Serbia, you probably should have an extra army. When your centers are Denmark, Kiel, Holland, and London or whatever, yeah, your fleets are pretty good. Yeah, eh, that's uh, fair. Um, I mean... So we didn't talk about the Russia and Turkey war in the like actual homeland very much because nothing happened. Yeah. It's Russia's in Armenia and Syria and the Black Sea, and no one's going to make any progress there. I'm um, confused as to why the Russian isn't doing anything. They've got Black Sea, they've got Armenia, they've got Syria. That's enough to... Force guesses, yes. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe they just want to get the army into position in Sevastopol so they can convoy over and not have this Constantinople tapping Black Sea being irritating, but like then Constantinople is just going to issue a support hold instead, so it's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, like, also this self bouncing in Armenia is actually a really, really suspect order set from Turkey. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously it worked out because Russia didn't go for anything, but if Russia went after Smyrna from Armenia, you still get it. And so it's like, all this is is defending Ankara. And like, I, that's fair, right? If you want to defend Ankara, defend Ankara, but... Yeah. I guess it's... Is it better than uh, supporting into Armenia in any way? I suppose if um, if Syria is going into Smyrna, then you don't want to support Smyrna up to Armenia. And if Black Sea is going into Ankara, you also don't want to support uh, Ankara into Armenia. So you wouldn't want to actually take it. I could see the yeah. reason for that, but the support hold on Ankara just seems better here, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, it, okay, if Black Sea so... cuts Ankara, then this is better than uh, support holding Smyrna. Right. Yeah, I mean, if Con with Khan tapping black, I, I was I'm, I, I wasn't thinking about this long enough. With Khan cutting black and Smyrna cutting Armenia, Ankara is safe, right? It's guaranteed safe. Yes. Um, it's just you're risking Smyrna, and this happens to be the only way you're risking Smyrna is specifically from Armenia, as opposed to risking it from Syria as well. So yeah, this is actually fun. Yeah, the the bad side that. of this is if they were taking going for Smyrna, they would also tap Ankara, and in this combination, since Armenia would dislodge uh, Smyrna if it goes in. Ankara would go to Armenia, Black Sea would get into Ankara as well, and Turkey goes minus two homes yeah. instead of one. Yeah, whereas... Yeah, I mean, it, it is basically just a guess between Smyrna and Ankara, but you're right. If This way, if you miss guess, you're losing two. Yep. Um, eh. It's It's high risk, like, on one particular combination. I guess it's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, I mean... You're disbanding anyways, right? So, what's the difference between down one and down three? Uh, two, I think. <laughs> well, if they lose... Oh, I mean, hey. <laughs> like, look, man. You're already disbanding. Uh, yeah, that's true, I suppose. And yeah, we've seen in this game, you can get knocked down to three for, like, the, the German showed us and uh, still make it back. So, you, you've got to... Right. Disband that fleet in Adriatic, though. I suspect it's a little bit different when there are Russian armies in Armenia and Syria and near Turkey. That's yeah. just like, and, our, and the Russian fleet in the Black Sea. That's just like <laughs> that's that's just tough. That's just tough to get back from. It really is because Russia will presumably never give up those dots once they're they're theirs, right? They they never have reason to, and there's no real way to take back Turkey without a lot of units. Um, wow, the good news is, we've got some French fleets for you. <laughs> this is true. French fleet, in, French fleet in the Aegean, French fleet in Eastern Med. You can break Turkey, eventually. Yes. Um, but it would be difficult. I think, actually, the difference between disbanding 1 and disbanding 3 is huge here, though, because disbanding 1, you get rid of the useless fleet in Adriatic. Disbanding 3. Disbanding 3, you need to lose, like, a Bulgaria and Constantinople or something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, shall we go ahead and look at builds here? Let's do it. Are we going to see any more German fleets? If we do, I think we'll kill myself. <laughs> no German fleets, just armies. But there is a French fleet coming on the board here. Um, 
probably a range trait. I'm um, saying, France, you're not allowed to build any more armies. You're a pure naval power. You can't solo with literally three armies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, three armies, like three armies, six fleet fronts, uh, seven fleet fronts now. Um, it's an interesting combination. I just spotted uh, Fleet Rome getting disbanded. What do you think of that? I don't think Rome is going to get taken this turn. I think uh, I think Italy's saying, "Hey, I'll go into Adriatic Sea, and then you can support me into Trieste or Venice." Okay, great. That's it's, what I think is happening. It's a solid strat. It's more forward thinking than like keeping Rome, because if you keep Rome, then France has zero reason to keep you alive, right? You have to rely yep. on the German to support hold you, and even if that happens, uh, France is going to pull Ionian back to Tyrrhenian Sea, and then you. Are dead. Or just cut Venice with Piedmont. Yeah, <laughs> that, that also works. Um, Ionian will be coming back to Tyrrhenian anyway to, to block it in the case of uh, keeping Rome, but. Yeah, yes. stop the retreat, of course. You're in a very bad situation in that case. Um, yeah, I'd like the German army seem correct. The French fleet is probably just going to sit there. Um, so, shall we go ahead to. Spring 1922. Literally nothing going on on that north side of the board. Oh, except Sevastopol up to Moscow. Does that count as north? <laughs> Moscow is a northern unit. Yeah. It's an interesting choice after they just like held their units around Turkey to get this army here to Sevastopol and then immediately back it off again. <laughs> Dude, Germany built some units, man. What if he moved into Prussia and Silesia this turn? Oh, the, yeah, that's exactly what this is against, right? I wonder if they, if the Russian was pushing him to wave a build. Um, that would make sense. Because now, obviously, Russia got into a position where they can support a unit back into Warsaw. So if, they were, if the German was in Prussia and Silesia here, they still wouldn't guess it. Um... Yeah, interestingly, Germany could have made aggressive moves still with Vienna to Galicia and then taken Trieste or not taken Trieste and just said, you know what, Austria, you're pretty, and then just gone full Galicia, Vienna, Tyrolia, push everything east. But, like, haven't Russia and Germany been very, very tight allies this entire game? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, have, any, have either of them done anything that could possibly be construed as aggressive against the other? I don't think so. As mentioned, it's been a while since Ezio and myself looked at this game last, so uh, if we say anything correct about previous episodes, <laughs> that that Power is why. Um, but yes, I think you're correct. Oh, I that... you said if we said anything correct about previous episodes, <laughs> it's glorious. Just the assumption is everything we said is completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> I think your way is better. <laughs> um, um, yes, but Germany and Russia have been pretty tight. This looks like paranoia um, taking hold, which could be really painful for Russia, because not only do they not make any progress against Turkey now, they also lose Serbia, although that might be by agreement. I'm not sure here. Um, clearly yeah, it's weird. Turkey supporting the Austrian unit into Serbia uh, dislodges the Russian unit, but Russia was moving out anyway, which makes you think that that may have been arranged with the Austrian. Yeah, it's possible. It's I, I don't I don't know. It's weird because Budapest is also being vacated. Um. Uh, which makes me think, yeah, this is Russia trying to keep Austria on side and say, hey, I can't kill you anymore. Germany's the only one who can. But now Germany controls Austria's destiny. Yeah, Germany still can, so that doesn't really work. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I would assume that Germany won't let Austria get this build. But I guess we'll see. Okay, hold up. Italy, Russia, and Austria. If Adriatic and Albania support Serbia to Trieste, and Germany tries to take Trieste, <laughs> Austria builds. Oh boy. What reason does Italy have to do that, though? Because Italy, we haven't mentioned it, but 
you were wrong about that whole don't take Rome thing. It looks like France is going for it. Um, um, and now Italy's going to say, hey, France, don't you want Austria to stay on the board? And then France is going to be like, now that you mention it, I would. How about you support France back into Trieste and I'll keep you in Rome? Yeah, but once you've committed to that, France can just stay in Rome and, uh, and Italy but is... Meme, would that. you stay in Rome if someone did that? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Depends on the situation. No, I would probably keep Italy alive say, here. Who would say, France, please move into English Channel in spring of 01 as England. You, I will move my army into Wales and vacate London. Please convoy my army from Wales to Belgium <laughs> and not take London. Please. Thank you. Oh, uh, that is this the is best you. opening. Um, this is this is also you, and you said as friends you would willingly do this instead of just walking into London. Man. Yeah, I mean, of course I would do that. It's an interesting opening. You you gotta take in interesting openings, right? And this is an interesting position. Okay. You gotta keep interesting positions. That is fair. I do think it it actually makes sense as well because like that fleet in Adriatic is not gonna harm you as France here, right? If it goes yeah. to London, you just kill Italy immediately. Uh, London? I, <laughs> if I'm it goes to London, you kill that fleet. If that fleet in the Adriatic Sea makes it to London, you've done something <laughs> very wrong, as friends. Ionian, which looks like London, but is not. Um, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, if that fleet goes to Ionian and taps your units or something to irritate you, then you just kill them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, uh, Brett, hold. this French built a fleet in Brest and then had it hold. Okay, whatever, man, it's fine. I feel like it, yeah, fleet. it's like adding to the Cold War in the North, right? The The French don't have the units, the, the fleets, to contest the North right now if Germany and, and Russia are on the same side. But if they can slowly slip more fleets onto the board and keep them there, they have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, men? Who knows what could happen? Yep. I want to see what happens to Austria. I really want to see if Austria survives this turn or not. Uh, shall we move ahead then? Full 1922. Right. They did survive this turn. But they, they... did survive. <laughs> the retreat to <laughs> Budapest. Um... I mean, it's still a home center, dude. <laughs> and uh Italy's building, right? No. And no, That's Italy loses it. Rome. Um Oh man. I'm trying to make sense of these German orders. Why would you order Vienna to Trieste and then support the Italian into Trieste? Um You want to make sure that something goes to Trieste, but you don't want it to... You basically don't want it to be vacant, right? Yeah, but... Serbia and Vienna bouncing there does leave it vacant. <laughs> it would, but you don't know that Austria is going back, right? That's true. Um, this but then situation why don't you is... it with strength, too? Because you want to keep Italy on the board. In case Italy just decides not to go for it, I guess. Um, but you could just support yourself there from Venice, right? Yeah, that's the odd thing. I think this keeps Italy on the board, and I think for whatever reason Germany is just actively interested in keeping Italy around. I don't see why. Like, I don't think that fleet can help Germany very much um, at all. And it looks like Germany is rotating around to attack France here with, uh, with moves to Ruhr and Munich, although you would expect to move to North Sea at the same time. Um, oh, yeah, I think this is just them saying, you know what? Ruhr is a good place to be. You have an extra fleet in the north, I've got an extra army. Let's call it a deal. Right. The, I still would have thought you'd take Trias for the build here, then just so you have that extra unit. Um, I like dots. Dots are good, yeah. <laughs> um, so, meanwhile, down here... Lots of nothing going on. I was kind of excited that France moved to Eastern Mediterranean last phase. I didn't 
mention it, but it's still just support holding Turkish units. It's like, I get slow play, but this is... <laughs> hey, man. This is extremely slow play. Yeah, and like, if Germany decides to take Burgundy now, it, this can potentially get awkward for France. Like... Uh, I mean, France is still building, which should make this okay, but I don't know. I, I guess the fear of France is if you attack Turkey, they probably throw stuff at you and just let Russia take everything, and then you lose the centers you've taken to Russia anyway. Um, like, probably not Greece, though. Not Greece, no, but you can't take Greece right now. You are not an Ionian. This turn you couldn't have, but why did you leave the Ionian into Eastern Med instead of just taking Greece? I'd assume so you could support... Because this is a, a solid line right now in Turkey, right? Um, Constantinople support Ankara, Smyrna support Ankara, Eastern Med support Smyrna. Can't be broken. Um, and leaves Aegean to support and hold Bulgaria. Bulgaria get broken? Uh, Bulgaria... Yeah, Albania, Serbia, Romania, Black Sea, right? Isn't yes. that four on Bulgaria? So we're still just guessing at Khan. Um, and as soon as Bulgaria gets broken, then Khan gets tapped, so Ankara falls? Yeah, so it's still just delaying strats, um, which yeah. doesn't work great. But yeah... I guess this France has been playing it slow for the last, like, 12 years, right? It's <laughs> so... the last 17 years, but yeah. Yep. Um... Probably before that, even. Whatever, it's fine. Ever since that German unit ended up in Gascony, I feel like France's plans just fell apart. <laughs> right? All because of that one retreat back in, like, 03 or whatever, where he retreated into Marseille or Paris instead of into Gascony. Yeah. Yep. Oof. Um, but, but yes. Sorry, go on. No, no, no. Just, no. but here we are. This is the position where France is saying, you know what, Russia? Well, let's take it slow. I'm going to slow you down a bit, and who knows? Maybe the chaotic Austrian will stop Russia from crushing. <laughs> and speaking of the chaotic Austrian here, got a support hold from Turkey, did not take it, went to bounce in Trieste, which makes sense. You want to get that build there. As a result, gets knocked out of Serbia. If the German had gone to Budapest, Austria would be dead right now. Um, but this actually ends up being better for him, because instead of taking Serbia, he takes a home center. And home centers are better than not home centers if you're on one supply center. <laughs> yeah, especially when they're adjacent to each other like this. I think Budapest is a much happier place. Yep. Uh, and... Italy is now going to be sat with a fleet in Trieste in the middle of this with what, Germany, Russia, and Austria right next to them. Turkey and France, two provinces away. This is an interesting spot. Yeah. Probably Everyone not one that, the Balkans. <laughs> the, the Trieste fleet, not the most useful unit. Um, it, no, especially, the unit. Especially when the person who put you there is in the only supply center you can take. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, he'd rather be there than dead, right? Yes. I mean, that's always true. Uh, and who knows? Could come back from this. Um, if you told me I got, next, I got another 100 years to come back, I'd say you can give me a dot. <laughs> I'll take any guy. I'll take any sinner. On a hundred years, guaranteed, I can make something happen. Uh, yep. And that is the beauty of a game that never ends. Um, shall we go to Winter 1923? Yeah. So the interesting thing here is, like, in a game like this, it, well, in a lot of diplomacy games, when someone's fighting on one SC, it's usually a somewhat doomed cause. You're just trying to get onto the stalemate line so that you can survive to a draw. Um, and in draw size scoring, you then get cut anyway because you're out of it, right? Knowing that this can go on for a hell of a lot longer actually increases the <laughs> the amount you want to survive anyway because you, you can get back into it. You're not just fighting to survive, you're fighting for the win. 
I'm not sure that either Austria or Italy are thinking about the win right now, but they absolutely could be. <laughs> Dude, after you get knocked down to one center, you retreat into your home and you say, all right, how do I solo from here? What's the game plan? That, uh, that's the attitude I respect. Pretty uh... sure Goldberg is not that player, but <laughs> that's kind of a crazy player to be. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so, adjudications. We see France scoring plus one, building in Paris, and Russia disbanding Syria. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I think it's okay. France's delaying tactics have worked. Russia is not willing to take anything in the north off the board. Um, so, yeah. The Russian can still take Bulgaria. No, they can't. Yeah, they... No, no, they can't take Bulgaria. Um, Bulgaria now. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, Russia now is what? just stuck. Now, now, what happens here? This is because probably the moment Germany France is, is waiting stuck, for. Right, Germany can't break Burgundy, and like Germany doesn't have any southern fleets to break France. In fact, nobody has any southern fleets to break France. Like. Except Italy. Italy and Turkey each have one southern fleet, and France has four. Yep. And neither of the fleets from Italy or Turkey are close enough to think about coordinating on a single territory. This is especially true. Especially while France is in Aegean. So, like... I mean... Yeah, I just don't know what anyone does. Trieste in particular is not going to be able to move anywhere because if you move, you lose it, right? The only place you'd want to move to is is Venice, um, but that's not likely to happen unless you get French support in, which isn't out of the question. Really it, like... <laughs> it's possible that Germany just decides not to uh, support it for a turn. Alright, so here's um, the question. How does Budapest and Trias not both get taken this turn and then everyone agrees to a draw? How does that not happen? I mean, I'd assume it's because France could, thinks they can get better out of it, right? Because... Well, like, France has no part of eliminating Budapest or Trias, right? Well, yeah, but everyone agreeing to a draw relies yeah, on France like, agreeing to if draw. If Budapest and Trias are eliminated, then, like, it's pretty easy for the three other powers to just be like, yeah, we're not soloing from here, so we're just gonna draw. Mm. Right. Yeah, in that case, he just decides to, to sweet, squeeze out the Turk, even. I'm, like, I'm tripping over my words here. I, I'm gonna blame it on playing that DBNI game until 7 a.m. <laughs> but yes, um, so Turkey would get squeezed out in that case, and you end up with the three-way draw. It's like the reverse AIR, um, where Austria is usually the power counterbalancing both in the middle, and if either side stabs, then the other will get more out of it. Right? You've got that here, but with Germany in the middle. Um, and it seems to be pretty damn effective. Uh, I, like, in this position, I would probably just expect Italy, Austria to be wiped out and then Turkey to be squeezed out in a few years. Um, but we know that's not what happens. They don't all draw in 1925 or whenever. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to see how uh, this changes things. Um, in oh, terms I of. See one way that it changes things. <laughs> Sorry, I went to the next year. I'm Wait, sorry. we we can't go to the next year. Yep, we've got to do power rankings. Oh, or, or are we doing them every three years? No, we can. We can do power rankings. Same as last ones. Uh, I think Austria is in a better spot than Italy here. Is it though? I mean, Army Budapest feels better than Fleet Trieste, is what it comes down sure. to on that. It's Especially your home center, and it's not an Italian home center. All right, I'll grant you. Fine. Okay, and then it, it's uh, everything else will be in the same order still. So <laughs> it would just be those two flipping around, which right. I have updated here. Um, that's, that's a change. There was, in fact, an update. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, now let's move to. Spring 1923. Triple bounce in Trieste. Huh. Asserting dominance. Uh, oh, and a French mostly NMR. 
in the south, which lets Russia make progress. Um, yeah. That, that's odd. You would expect France to enter orders, <laughs> given that they entered orders up here. Uh, yeah. Maybe They're just saying, you know what, Turkey, I don't like you very much. Maybe these ones up here were standing orders and these ones down here they hadn't decided on um, by deadline. But, I mean, the alternative is they are just going for the cut everyone else of the draw and end it approach, which... Which apparently Germany and Russia are not on board. Otherwise, Trieste and or Budapest would have been taken, probably both this year, by Germany. I mean, yeah, it, it might still happen, right? Romania and Serbia are both adjacent to Budapest. Russia tried to come down to Galicia, although maybe that was um, that was an agreed bounce. <laughs> uh, the, Re the German is still in position to take Trieste here. It's just that the Italian Navy has decided, if I'm going to die, I want to go out fighting. <laughs> yeah, plus Serbia and Romania are both probably used... To take Bulgaria this turn, rather than eliminate Austria or Italy. Yeah, that's true. Um, either that or hold Greece, <laughs> because those French fleets are probably not going to be amazingly friendly. We'll see, though. They, they've they yeah, shown considerable them. restraint. Yeah, I would expect Russia to support Greece into Bulgaria. Would just be my tactical instinct. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Nothing they can really do to stop that if you combine it with a tap on Constantinople. Um, they could support Bulgaria the other way with three. <laughs> okay, but then you're not losing Greece. Yes. So either way, you get plus one. Um, right. Uh, I and would if be. If you have a bonus of popping Bulgaria, Turkey's probably not rebuilding that. So. Yeah, because you're feeling good. Turkey's essentially minus two. And you're still building one. Feels great. Everything here is essential to stay where it is. Ankara, Smyrna, Constantinople, just because there's so many units around it. Even these French units that are supposedly helpful, you still don't want to open up these centers to them. Uh, uh, but then Turkey says, you know what? Smyrna to Syria. Constantinople <laughs> support hold Ankara. Who needs Bulgaria? Greece is going to be mine anyways. And then you built Smyrna. Nailed it. <laughs> that would be neat. Um... I guess we'll see whether it happened. Uh, Not a chance in a million years. <laughs> I would expect the German to kill the Italian here. Uh, but, I mean, not much else to talk about this phase, is there? Too many holding units. So, shall we move to the fall? Let's do it. Nope. <laughs> Okay, this is actually a very similar moveset to the one I was describing. Ankara is still safe, you just have Khan cut Black Sea. And, um, yeah, that works. Yeah, and I should say that moveset you said, not a chance. <laughs> In terms of the, the reversal uh, Bulgaria thing. Wait, was that your... Th no, you didn't say not I was a chance. Talking that about you the said that... You're not a Syria nonsense. Wasn't going to happen. Sorry, yes. You said that if they did this with Greece, then uh, it doesn't matter because you keep Greece anyway. Um... Well, so what's interesting is that Adriatic Sea cut Ionian, so the Russian attack still succeeded from Greece. Yep. Uh, so Turkey is still at four... Um, down from five with only three units those but turkey did vacate smyrna so turkey is going to build i wonder what they build because smyrna i mean it, sticking a third army in their homeland just feels wrong feels wrong but that <laughs> fleet also is a good way to get france to attack you <laughs> yep i mean if you build the fleet you have to somehow rotate your fleets into ank and con if you want to keep france on side and that seems difficult uh, yeah. The but I would expect a fleet and to try and rotate them around. I think everything you built is everything you build is going to be disbanded anyways. <laughs> right, you're gonna lose Greece and you're gonna get down to three, and then fleet con army ank army Smyrna is the setup you really want. So, oh hmm, maybe you actually build an army so that you um, so that France can convoy you to Greece. Ooh, I mean, I would first disband Syria, but then hell yes. 
Oh, hang on. You... Oh, yes. I, I, <laughs> I didn't even notice the move to Syria here. Or the retreat. Or the retreat. Um, you could actually get convoyed by France to Albania, which would be an interesting one. <laughs> if you don't want to get bounced in Greece. Uh, there are fun yeah. possibilities here. Yeah, there are some moves here with France convoying Turkish units away. Man, you love hostile convoys and retreats, dude. <laughs> All right. Yep. Um, let's uh, let's see. Are there builds? Yeah, we're gonna see the Turkish build and yep. the Russian build because Russian went plus one as well. Okay. Um, so I just moved ahead to the builds. So I don't know if that was. <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's say, let's see them. Yep. Cool. Smear and a sev. Uh, Okay. Well, that army could get convoyed. <laughs> it could get convoyed as far as Tuscany. That'd be fun, right? You put uh, wait, put the the Turk in Rome and then use their army to help you knock the German out of Venice. <laughs> I mean, that's a legal move, but why? <laughs> it's not great, I know, but like. As France, you've got to be annoyed with Germany here for leaving Italy alive. Yeah, because Italy's only purpose at the moment is to cut Ionian. Um, which is not friendly towards you. Uh, and it, the only reason they're doing that is so that the Russian can make progress against the Turk. Which you don't want to happen for some reason, I guess, because you want to keep your solo chances open. Um, so, why not? launch an attack on Germany here. <laughs> I don't think it would be amazingly successful, <laughs> but it would yeah, be I fun. think that's why, right? France was already at, like, 14 or 15 centers this game, some large number of centers close to soloing, and the line got formed, and so it's like, what's the point, man? You're not gonna solo, you're only at 11 centers. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know, man. Yeah... I'm wondering how viable a French attack on Germany is at the moment, because... It's not very... North Sea is being left open every turn. You can just move there, um, and get breasts up to the English Channel. Obviously, you can't really make any army progress against the German mainland to start off with. Uh, but you do have fleets along the entire southern peninsula. You must be able to do something with them. Um, to get Not you some Germany, senses. Though. Not against Germany, but... Well, no, you can convoy the Turkish army to Rome. <laughs> wow. Alright, so we're gonna use one, two, three fleets <laughs> to convoy there, and then... We need to get Italy to agree to not defend Trieste, but support the army... Turkish army from Rome into Venice. That's I mean, what we need. Or, or you get the Italian to go to Trieste, and you say, hey, we'll support you in there, and then you support the Italian fleet into Trieste, get rid of the German army, and then knock the Italian back out again afterwards. Uh, how does, how does uh, sorry, France into support, Venice, even. How does France support the Italian into Trieste? Sorry, into Venice. Venice is what I was supposed to be saying. Okay, so we get Italy back into Trieste, say, we'll support you into Venice, while telling Turkey... Will convoy you to Rome and then support you into Venice. <laughs> Look, something will work, I'm sure. I want this in convoy the meantime, to work. Germany says, Oh, you're talking to people in the south about attacking me. Hey, I'm going to move to the North Sea with strength too. <laughs> Look, there's a reason I'm not good at, at the public press, all right? <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, hey. So I think point is made. There's not a huge amount that France can do to really advance on this board at the moment. They can get North Sea. So I believe, like whatever, two years ago, back while Ruhr was vacant, I believe there was an opportunity um, because Ruhr just can control so much of the Lowlands. It borders Belgium, Holland, and Kiel itself, and Munich, which is very relevant for slowing down German units from getting back to the north. Yeah, if France had slipped in there, it would have been huge. But yeah, yes, but this while was. While Germany's in Munich and Ruhr, there's just nothing. You can't you can't break that without the North Sea and English Channel and Picardy and like you just don't have it if you just get them all. Yep. Yeah, uh, you can get them there eventually. I think it just it's just not easy. And like you want. I don't. These think some... you even can. These... Remember that if um so Kiel and Bosnia have been bouncing forever, right? 
So as soon as you end up in the North Sea, Germany says, oh, guess that's happening. And then Kiel goes to Helgoland Bight. Bothnia makes it into Baltic Sea or Sweden, depending. And then Barents Sea keeps tapping. And then there's enough anti-French fleets. France can't hold the North Sea. That makes sense. Yep. It's a really good deterrent. The big thing is, France has a lot of units, but they're all in the south and they're not gaining centers. They're not putting any extra units back at home. Um, it's been a long time. That's just... Yeah, not very useful when it comes to soloing. Shall we move ahead to Spring 24? Let's do it. Okay, if I see my Rome convoy, I'm going to be so happy. No, no Rome convoy. No. Did you see a Turkish NMR? Turkish NMR, really? <laughs> oh, man. Look, Turkey, I know we said you were going to disband one of these units, but, like, you didn't need to, <laughs> well, to do it. And uh, I mean, France. Does the NMR actually cost anything, though? I mean, it costs Armenia. Um, they could have forced. But Armenia was lost. They could have forced Syria to disband here because Eastern Medsit was supporting Armenia down. They could have done it with Smyrna as well. Of course, yeah, definitely. Um, alright, 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 that's a real cost. You, you want Smyrna to be not... You want Syria to be not there. Yes. Um, the... Of course, in that case, there was a chance that Sevastopol would just come down to Armenia anyway. Um, and follow it up, but... But that's not the world we're living in. Yeah, it didn't happen so, here. Clyde, I think, misordered to North Atlantic Ocean instead of Norwegian Sea. So and, and Germany failed to bounce in Baltic. What? <laughs> and Germany ends up in Rome. I think the not bouncing in Baltic is very intentional. Right? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this is just... <laughs> why do you want to not bounce in Baltic here as Germany? Well, because you want to let those Russian fleets get a little bit further west, right? So you can help them against the French? I have no idea. You have to kind of push them through Denmark in this case. You might as well just ask them to go to Sweden. Although, if you do that, I guess you're making it obvious you're stabbing France here. Um, yeah, we're just letting them into Baltic. It's kind wait, of like... is Italy dead? No, it's a spring um, it's phase. Spring. Okay. And um, Rome can support Apulia into Naples. Yep. This is true. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, this is crazy. Austria has a guess to go plus one. Right? Uh, oh, because the, the Russian units is vacating and the German units is vacated, so the only thing left is Serbia. I that guess. can cover Budapest. And also, you can go to Vienna, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah, this is very cool. <laughs> Austria could go. They, they could double their SC count this turn. Um, I mean, one to two is the biggest change, so. Yep. Alright, so. We've got a probable misorder incline in the north. The and That seems like really bad timing considering what happened with the German probably staff. Terrible um, timing. And London staying in London is kind of awkward here. Right. Like, I guess you need it to be there so it can be convoyed back to the mainland, but you really would like it to be in Yorkshire. Because now Edinburgh is just lost if yeah. Russia wants it. Yeah, Russia can just walk into Edinburgh here. Um, or sail, I suppose. Uh, and Russia gets Greece as well. This is And, of course, managed to blow up Armenia. I don't think they take anything more off of Turkey because of the French fleets, but France is going to have a painful turn with Rome being lost. Uh, can I point out <laughs> the Rome convoy would have prevented this German step? Yes. So I am going to stand by my assertion and say I was correct. <laughs> Absolutely, the Rome convoy would have been great. Uh, France is kicking himself. You know what doesn't work with the convoy though? When you're convoyee and MRS. Oh yeah, that that's true. We would need to get Turkey to wake up. Um, but yes, uh, man, some exciting things to see this phase. Is Italy going to survive? I think Italy doesn't survive because the obvious move for France is to just support hold Naples from Ionian, right? Yeah, definitely. 
Um, but Austria does survive 100% and has a chance to go up to 2. Yeah, I think it's actually literally impossible for Austria to die. If Austria... Yeah, it's just impossible. Okay, assuming Austria retreats to an open, empty SC, if there is one. That needs to be the... Yeah, so qualifier. German can dislodge uh, Austria from Trieste, but yes. they would be able to retreat to Vienna, and the Austrian could have moved to Budapest to, to block Serbia from going there, so... Yes, it, that, that works too, even, of course, yeah. Then you get the, the extra build, yeah. It's gonna be that. That's a nice turn right. of events for the Austrian. Let's. So Italy is dead, right? Finally, Italy is gone. Fought hard. Did its best. Seems that way. Um... What's gonna happen with Germany, though? Like, I'm a little surprised that Germany didn't make, didn't do anything. Like, move to the North Sea while taking Rome. Yeah, North Sea is the weird one. Everything else looks like a stab. This makes sense. You wouldn't want. There's reason to not bother attacking Burgundy because, you know, yeah, you're right, not going to get it. Right. Um, but North Sea, you would expect to be taken in a stab. Yeah. If... Who knows? Mysteries of the public press. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead to Fall 1924 and find out what happened here. Oh, <laughs> the German okay. never went well. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> really? <laughs> and in spite of this, France still respects the DMZ in the North Sea. What, what is happening? Okay, so the the whole DMZ in the North Sea thing makes me think that maybe the swap over of Rome was arranged, but then why is France supporting Italy into Venice? And Italy does survive as a result of this NMR here. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, Russia does walk into Edinburgh. Yes. So France is going minus two. Ouch. Um, loses Rome, loses Edinburgh, yes. And France's ally in Turkey also manages to lose Constantinople despite having a support hold on it. Um, because so this, this Turk likes moving units too much. Yep. <laughs> that would that attempt to Russia cut. goes plus two as well. Oof. Um, so Russia's at eleven and France is at nine. Do we have a new number one? I think we do, and this is right in time for power rankings. It's there. So, was it correct for the Austrian to support Apulia to uh, to Venice here? Well, I mean, this, I suppose in this case, it's it didn't fine. matter with the NMR, but like, dude, I would rather have a one center Italy in Venice than a German in Venice when I'm probably going to try to take tri uh, retake Vienna from Trieste. Yeah, the, the, so there are two sort of conflicting reasons on this, right? We have, yeah, it's always good to have the people next to you be different people because then they they don't work together against you as easily. Um, two German units can just take Trieste. A German and an Italian unit need to coordinate and decide who's going to guess it and all. Uh, the downside, I think, is that you just turn that army into a fleet. And the fleet, being the only unit that Italy has, is more likely to go after Trieste just so that it doesn't die in Venice. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's fair. But I suppose there there's advantage to it being a fleet instead of an army there. Even if it does get Trieste, it's not going to go into Vienna or Budapest. Um, so, yeah. It seems like a, an interesting move, and one that the Italian is going to be very thankful for. <laughs> or maybe not, depending on how much they actually want to play this game for the next however many years. <laughs> uh... So, Russia takes Constantinople, they take Greece, they take Edinburgh, they actually go plus three, right? Um, oh, plus four, because they lose Armenia as well. That gets disbanded. 
<laughs> but two of their okay, centers are covered. Three open home centers. They no, have only two open only home two centers. open home centers, so they're gonna have to wave Actually, two. Point two under. Ouch. Um. Yeah, we can have an empty, a bit of an empty board for this turn with the <laughs> not if, enough units here. Uh, shall we go through to winter? Yeah. Yeah. We we'll see these French disbands and Russian builds. The Russian builds a fleet in Saint Petersburg, North Coast. That feels anti-French because it's not in the south coast, but it can pivot quite easily towards uh, Denmark if it needs to. Uh, and Army Moscow is just... yeah, you had to. Um, French disbands, what do you think of those? Dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just... I'm off it. Why are we disbanding English Channel instead of Mid-Atlantic Ocean? I don't understand. Show of, like... Hey, I'm with you to Germany, maybe? Hey, I can't defend myself. Please don't move into English Channel in the North Sea. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, as France, you've got to be trying to turn Germany on Russia here, right? You're saying Russia has attacked me. Uh, that Look, they're doing really well in the south. We need to unite against them. You need to go that way instead of this way. Um, it's a 12 center Russia. Get him! <laughs> I mean, 12 center Russia can be pretty strong. Um, Get it! Everybody attack <laughs> Russia! Sound the alarm! Man, France feels really... Like, I don't get the fleet Naples disband either. It's why are you keeping Ionian and Aegean Eastern Mediterranean here? Eastern Mediterranean over Naples is the one that gets to me. I can understand Aegean and Ionian, right? Those are how you gain war centers, but like... Maybe it's him saying, look, man, I'm not going after Rome. Germany, we're friends. Yeah, these these feel like appeasing the German builds, uh, well, disbands, but um, not sure how well they'll work. And the, I can't help but think, well, I know the Turkish position has gotten worse because uh, they lost a center, um, but the fact that they have a fleet in Smyrna now instead of an army is, is painful. Uh, because it can't support hold Ankara. Um, it, Ankara is just going to get blown up next turn, right? Uh, no, it's not um, because Smyrna can support it the yeah. other way. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. And, like, you could also just support Smyrna into Khan. And if Smyrna gets into Khan, even if you lose Ankh, then Khan can support Smyrna Ankh. So, like, it's not as bad as it usually is. I'm just assuming that the French fleets are Turkish fleets, is basically my assumption. Mm. Which makes the Turkish position much better than it usually would be. I mean, yeah. goes without saying. But, uh, Eastern Mediterranean isn't necessary. There's no reason you want to keep that unit here. <laughs> um. Yeah, unless you're support holding Smyrna. And when what against, only one yeah. unit against it's like you're saying that this fleet is the furthest across the stalemate line, therefore it must be more useful than all the other ones. Um, yeah, which is kind of an argument, right? Like, if you're France and you have an army in Livonia or something, like, you kind of want to keep that army. You really, really want to keep that army, but, like, sometimes other things matter more. Yeah. Eastern Mediterranean does not matter very much. Um, and we see the Austrian build in Budapest. Nice. Well done, Austria. <laughs> Back in this game. Dude, uh, he's probably going to retake Vienna, man. Yeah. And there's not a ton the other powers can do to, to stop him from building here. They could unite against Trieste or whatever, but even if Why? Russia walks into Budapest behind him, he can just knock him straight back out again. Uh... Austria's played this... Actually, that, that support up to Venice... Like, I, I had slight misgivings about it, but it seems really, really good looking at this position now. <laughs> um, it's so much stronger than if a German army was there. So... Let's hope it doesn't tap Trieste. Are we gonna bother with power rankings, rankings again? Right? We, I mean, yes. if you have a different number one, 
We do. Right? That's the big deal. Uh, we have I a will... new big daddy. Here we go. I will swap those over already here. Russia now in first, and uh, France in second. Uh, as we say, always, um, supply center count is equal to your power ranking, right? Um, although... Yeah, it's also that I think his position is actually just... Basically, all of Russia's units seem very good. They seem basically where you would want units to be. Yes. Right? Whereas like, with France here, we've got fleet Eastern Mediterranean, fleet Aegean, fleet Ionian, which aren't doing anything at the moment. They're just harassing Russia. Yeah, um, and fleet Mid-Atlantic Ocean is way worse than a fleet in English Channel would be. Yep. I could see a reasonable argument that if France had fleets in all of these more forward positions, that France's position could still be better than Russia's. Edinburgh is not a particularly safe French uh, particularly say for Russian center, I believe France is likely to retake that in the near future because of the army in Yorkshire. And Greece is also not a particularly safe Russian center with French fleets in Aegean and Ionian. But and so I could see the argument for French for France's position being superior to Russia's, but yeah, feels so bad, man. Yeah, I feel like a lot of it comes down to who Germany decides to attack here as well. Because if Germany forces North Sea here, France is so incredibly screwed. There's, like, you don't have the units on this front that you need uh, to survive yeah. a Russian-German attack here. Um, if if Germany does go the other way, France is in a much better position because Russia suffers as a result. Uh Although something worth noting, this is one of the few games where I think people might legitimately pick neither as their option. In most games, whenever there's a war between two powers, everyone sort of picks a side, right? Occasionally there are players who don't impact it too much, but like, they will still mess with one side or the other. I could legitimately see Germany sitting here, support holding Belgium and Holland, and support holding Ruhr, and then just saying, nope. I'm not. I'm not doing anything. You can, you're not allowed to walk into Denmark, and but I'm also not going to go into Prussia and Silesia, and I'm not going to attack Burgundy ever. Figure it out, you guys. I could really, really see that happening. It's basically like Switzerland just got a lot bigger, right? <laughs> You've got a war really? where the entirety yeah. of Germany is impossible. Yeah. Yeah, and the Lowlands. But I could actually again. I could. I could see that happening this game. Yeah. Uh, I could actually see it too. It would be an interesting situation. Um, that kind of thing doesn't really happen, as you mentioned. Um, I think maybe the one thing that makes Russia's position less strong than it looks is the fact that Austria is getting back into the game. Uh, so those Balkan centers are not as safe as they initially appear, but Russia does have the units to send in. Um, Speaking of which, our current power rankings have Russia, then France, then Germany, which I think is fair. Um, if anything, uh, Germany... Does Germany go higher up than France here, maybe? Just because the French units are so incredibly out of position? Probably yeah. not, I don't think so. Um, France says 9, Germany says 8. <laughs> yep. But the French 9 include I... Naples and... Like... An interesting question. Is Austria higher than Turkey? Yes, that, that was what I was going to get to in a second. Um, Turkey looks likely to die, and Austria does not. Well, like, again, if you were to tell me that there is a different nation with fleets in Aegean and Eastern Med, Russia's in Khan and the Black Sea, with an army in Sev ready to go, I would say Turkey is literally dead this year. But these French fleets in Aegean and Eastern Med haven't done anything! <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Russia and, and France are at war is definitely a point in Turkey's favour. Um, but I, I don't think it puts them above Austria, because Austria is going to grow, and Turkey is not. Yeah, but Turkey's Turkey. I, I don't think see... Turkey is more likely to be part of any draw this game have, has than Austria is. Hmm. 
So I don't see Turkey getting out of this situation in any you know, way. Even Turkey if they Constantinople? even if they retake Constantinople, they still have two French fleets on their south border and a bunch of Russian units on their oh, north. The if Jews one side, some point. if one side has to disband, which I feel like is more likely to be France at this point, although I'm not sure on that. Well, Russia's um, currently playing two under, right? So Russia's not disbanding for a million years. Oh yeah. That's true, so it's definitely likely to be France. Um, then the other side will just walk over Turkey. Uh, so, yeah, I I would put Austria higher, I think. I think that Austria is more likely to solo than Turkey, but I think <laughs> Turkey is more likely part of the draw. Okay. Hmm. We haven't really defined what power rankings mean in terms of that uh, <laughs> let's leave Turkey above Austria for now then but say that that's a questionable decision you're the one making the power rankings man if you think Austria is higher than Turkey you're like yeah let's do it then hmm. feel free man alright I'll swap them over then Let, let's uh, give Goldfinger our trust here well my trust do not show me up as a fool for trusting you Goldie <laughs> alright um, so, our power rankings for this year, Russia in first, France in second, Germany third, uh, then Austria in fourth, Turkey in fifth, and poor old Italy with fleet Venice, not something you ever want to be down to, um, is solidly in last place. Uh, shall we go ahead to the spring? Let's do it. 1925 is upon us, almost a quarter of the way through this game. Um, and Germany has not decided to stay neutral, as we can see here, and that disband of English Channel is a big, painful move for the French, although Germany still respects the demilitarized zone in the North Sea, <laughs> for some reason. What? The actual... <laughs> what is happening, dude? How has nobody moved to the North Sea for ten years? This is yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some investigation. You keep talking. I'm gonna see how long it's been since someone has moved into the North Sea. Yeah, All right. Think. Well, I will give my solo commentary while Ezio has done that. It's just really amusing to see with the North Sea because like that is usually one of the most contested provinces in the game. It's got so many centers bordering it. It's had so many fleets bordering it here, and still no one has gone there. And you think here, especially with the uh, German moving to Heligoland Bight, North Sea is just a better Heligoland Bight most of the time. It's, it's far better, so why not go there? It makes no sense. <laughs> uh, what else do we see? We do see the French fleets rotating around the bottom with the fleet going to Syria, which is an interesting spot for it to be in, um, and not a very useful one, only adjacent to two other provinces. Um, Alright, I have finished my research. It okay. was spring 1917 was the last <laughs> time a fleet has moved into the North Sea. Oof. So we'll see if that stays, we'll so see when the next fleet moves in there, but... That's eight years, what's the over-under on it making a decade? Uh, it's not going to be a What's Helgeland Bight doing? Why isn't Helgeland Bight in the North Sea now? What it's doing if not moving into the North Sea this turn? Okay. How can it last another turn? Literally the only advantage of Helgeland Bight over the North Sea is that it's adjacent to Kiel. Maybe he didn't trust the Russian and wanted something to go to... He wanted to be prepared to send his fleet to Kiel. But then, like, you can do that pretty easily anyway. He could cover Maybe Kiel with arms. Maybe he's planning on putting Russia into the North Sea. That's possible. Or Are maybe, hang I'll on. Take Sweden? I wonder if Russia was saying, I'll take a 50-50 on going to Clyde or North Sea or something, so Germany just couldn't go there. But that doesn't make sense if, either. If Russia's trying to mislead Germany, then Germany just goes into the Baltic Sea and says, bite me. Yeah, I don't think that's, like, misleading Germany. I feel like it's saying, you know, I was potentially going to North Sea to help you into London, or I was going to Clyde will, like, confuse the French for a turn. But then the French can't block North Sea anyway, so there's no point going for that gamble. You just tell Germany to take it and then do something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and say, I might be moving to Clyde, I might be holding. 
And then why does in France having Mid Atlantic Ocean not cover English Channel is just questionable. Yep. Do you really like? Because if this had gone through, you have North Atlantic Ocean and Clyde. Is that really where you want your two fleets to be? Um, I suppose if you are expecting Germany to side with you, it's okay, but it just makes it more likely that Germany goes to English Channel, because there's literally nothing you can do to stop them then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, this is a, a, a phase of blunders. Um, All right, and then I think you mentioned the Eastern Med to Syria. Yes. I think Turkey's dead. <laughs> I, think, yep. I think Turkey finally found a way to die. And it was this. Okay, we just point out here, France could have taken Greece <laughs> instead yes. of doing this. Yep. And that's so much better than being in Syria and Eastern Mediterranean. Well, if you it's want like... to take the Turkish center, then you got to do this. But yeah, I would assume you want to just take the Russian center, because you're at war with Russia! Yes. If you take the Turkish center here, okay, the objective of taking the Turkish center, I assume, is that you take the last southern fleet off the board and you block in the Russian fleet. So the only fleet in the south is the Italian one, and therefore Tunis is safe. But the oh, Italian wait. fleet is going to rotate through to Apulia and then into Naples if you do this, and then you. <laughs> and Tunis is already safe. Like, yeah. I don't actually, know. Rome can take Naples for free, and nothing can stop it. Uh, Rome just moved up to Tuscany. It's really oh, hard Rome to see with Tuscany? these arrows. Oh, that arrow is too small. The thing. Excuse me. Never mind. That's yeah. illegal. But. I would not be surprised next year, in 1926, if these French fleets stay in their current area and don't go back to Ionian. I would not be surprised to see Venice do the coastal crawl round to uh, to Naples. Yeah, and like these fleets kind of feel stuck now. They're obligated to take Smyrna and hold them in Smyrna, right? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, dude. there's nothing else they can do. Syria is just such a useless province for anything else. <laughs> the only use is to put an army there if you really want to take Smyrna, or some nonsense with Armenia, rarely. But, like, Syria exists to be convoyed to as part of the Lepanto. That's it. Yep. Um, or to put your army in right at the start of Turkey if you want to show non-aggression to everyone and dissuade yeah, a Elephant. Um, but fleet Syria, the only reason you see that usually is when Turkey has been forced out of Smyrna as their last supply center and needs somewhere to retreat. Yeah, sometimes you see like Eastern Med retreating to Syria. Right, that that does happen occasionally, but like fleet Syria is a feels bad moment. Yep. And like talking of other blunders, what on earth is Austria doing? Trieste to Albania here? Really? Well, I mean, Serbia has got vacated. This is <laughs> true, but like why? Trieste. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yep. I, I can understand vacating Trieste if you're trying to I don't know, like Maybe Russia was expecting France to go Ionian to Albania, Eastern Med to Ionian. Uh, a reasonable that's move set, possible. To yeah, be sure. that would make sense. Um, but as Austria, surely you don't want to end up in Albania here, because if you end up in Albania, what's that unit gonna do? It can attack Serbia, which is a plus, but it can only attack Serbia because Serbia has moved out. <laughs> Otherwise, Serbia would retreat to Trieste, yeah. Yes. And now the Italian can move into Trieste behind you. Yeah, so Budapest or Albania needs to cover Trieste while the other takes Serbia. Uh, or takes Vienna, I assume, but then the, the Germans should be covering that. Um, That's why I go after Serbia, because there's a theory that Bulgaria is used to deal with Constantinople, which is currently Turkish, and Greece is the only other unit that can cover Serbia, so I think it's more likely you end up... Maybe you go after Greece and cover Trieste. Maybe that's the one. Maybe? I'm not sure what guess I would make here. It, the, the whole point, though, is you didn't need to make a guess. You could have just stayed in this position taking Vienna. 
Um, hey, hey, I'm not talking. I'm not going to aspirations on the mighty Goldfinger. I'm okay. just going to say, if I was in this position, would I go to Greece or would I go to Serbia or would I go to Vienna? Clearly, he's playing the long game. I wonder if he was expecting uh, Ionian to stay there and maybe convoy him to Syria or something. Convoy him to Naples. Oh, oh yeah. Because uh, no one can stop that convoy. And then he's like, great, I'll take Naples and then I'll take Rome next turn and I'll take Vienna as well. So you give me one center, I take two from Germany next year. Oh, man. I think this board has sent us slightly insane this phase. Um... Dude, I don't even know, man. Okay, so count, counting the blunders in our eyes, Eastern Mediterranean to Syria, uh, Trieste to Albania, nothing moving to North Sea, Mid-Atlantic Ocean to North Atlantic Ocean are all terrible moves. <laughs> I would say all of those moves have have little enough arguments for that it, they're just bad. Yeah, no, I think they're... I, I, yeah, no... Uh, Maybe this was one of those phases where, like, everyone leaves their press to the last minute and then no one knows what to do, so all of the moves are useless. Um, what the, what press does France need here? Hey, Germany, are you still at war with me? Great, I'm going to make defensive moves against you. Russia, are you still at war with me? Great, I'll make defensive moves against you. Like, that's all that needs to happen. But instead, like... France didn't even withdraw Piedmont. Piedmont's still in Piedmont, so Burgundy's gonna get taken. Like, ugh. Yep. Ouch. Alright. I okay. would cover. I would go after Vienna and Trieste if I was Austria in this position. I think that's... that's uh, so, yeah, you have to cover Trieste because the Italian is almost certainly going there, right? If they can get an army build, they're gonna be so happy. <laughs> and you don't really want them to take it. Um, because it's your home center. Budapest yes. going to Vienna makes sense. I think it's a good move. I think Germany will probably block it, but it's worth taking the chance because... I think that there's a really good chance that Tyrolia supports Tuscany into Piedmont. Oh, yeah, actually that makes a lot of sense. And actually maybe that's a reason why Italy wouldn't go to Trieste. Um, because yeah, then you just end up with bad. Fleet Trieste but... again. <laughs> yep. Uh... Hmm, maybe this isn't going to work out as badly for Austria as I thought it would. Uh, but There's a reason I said that's my move sequence. Yeah, Albania back to Trieste still makes sense, even if the uh, Italian isn't going there, just to 100% make sure you keep your home center while you try and take Vienna. Um, right, well... <laughs> I think we might be about to say goodbye to the Turk. Uh, well, we're very likely to say goodbye to the Turk. If if Italy outlasts Turkey, I'm going to love. Um, That'll be a very impressive result from the Italian. <laughs> yep. Uh, we should stop talking about this phase. It's just going to send us completely insane. Let's do it. Let's go to fall 1925. Alright, well, the Austrian knew something I didn't, and that was that they were getting supported into Romania. Why? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Hang on. <laughs> so, in addition... Okay, um, so in addition to this, the French amazing move to Syria is now <laughs> followed oh, up no! with Syria back to the Eastern oh, Mediterranean. No, <laughs> and then France goes to Preston Gascony. Why? <laughs> Has France just gotten tired of playing the game? Is that why this is happening? Well, at least something went into the North Sea this turn. We're not. We're like... No! France, no! Okay. Why? So, let's do some proper analysis. Why would France go to Gascony and Brest? Alright, so Brest, you want to cover Brest? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I get that. 
Gascony, because Burgundy's ugly this time of year, Gascony's much prettier. I hear there's some really nice mountains there. Alright? <laughs> you want to go for a hike. That army's been stuck there in, like, some nice farmland for its whole life, but you know what? They want to go hiking. So let them go to Gascony, alright? That's, that's totally reasonable. And then, why is Mid-Atlantic Ocean supporting North Atlantic Ocean and Irish Sea instead of bouncing breast or something? Because apparently you've worried about English Channel tapping Irish Sea, obviously. Um, and then, why did we go into Syria? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like... <laughs> I mean, Why are we going to Syria, Captain Mew? What were we thinking? I assume that the uh, the French Navy had run out of fuel or something and needed to refuel on land. Um, Maybe they it's... were visiting Jerusalem. Oh, that's right? possible. They went on a pilgrimage. They were just like, yeah. I don't that's think it. Jerusalem is in Syria. <laughs> it's is... like pretty close, alright? Yes, but if you look at the Syria, Jerusalem is just like a little bit south of there, right? Okay. That's Maybe a fair. lot of it south, but like Jerusalem is pretty close to Syria. It's sort of the closest you can get. Right? Okay. So the, yes, the logical answer to this is that the French decided to commit to the Crusade and just decided to go for the Holy Land instead of a uh, yeah. supply center. So we need um, to see him retake Rome and Constantinople, and then he will soon be able to mend the schism in Christianity. <laughs> Like, what else? Like, just why? What, what in-game reason, explanation is there? What was this French player thinking at the time? I honestly don't want to know. I think it would hurt me Okay. if I discovered the answer. I think I have a theory anyway, so I will go All ahead right. and potentially hurt right. you. The answer would be they were about to kill Turkey, and then Turkey convinced them not to. Um, particularly based on the fact that Beforehand, there was an assumption that Austria would be attacking Russia, and now it looks like Austria and Russia are working together. Um, yeah, Austria's but that doesn't Russia. that doesn't explain the move of Burgundy to Gascony. Like, eh? I mean, to be fair, I think retreating to Gascony is natural. Right? Yeah, but you don't just move there. <laughs> of course, you don't just move there, right? You could you could tap Picardy and then bounce, right, and then retreat to Gascony, and that's great mm. but like it's not it's not actually that terrible of a move to just move straight to Gascony. Right? no You're i gonna... think it's just it's just because i'm seeing everything else and going ah <laughs> yeah no it's just this year from france like what moves did france make this year right they pulled out of yorkshire they lost burgundy they moved into syria and eastern med and then out of syria and eastern med and the gnc the gnc did the equivalent of holding twice right those three southern fleets, the most important units for France that we've been describing for their potential growth, have just done nothing for the past year. Yep. Um, on the plus side, at least they haven't lost Naples. Um, yeah, through a Christmas miracle. <laughs> but yes. Germany didn't leave Rome. Germany takes Naples and then like, oops. And... France's position at home is just horrendous, and they're either going to have to take these three southern fleets off the board and keep their uh, defences intact up there, which are still pretty terrible defences, because because Germany is in English Channel, Picardy, Burgundy, and Piedmont. Um, yeah. Or you disband everything in the north, keep these three uh, French units in the south on the board, try and take something in Turkey or hold Tunis and Naples and like re-establish yourself as king of the Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the terrifying part for England North is that there's even a fleet in the North Sea now, right? It happened. Yes. <laughs> and so English Channel can be support held. English Channel is not going to get taken for a long time. So, like, it's just, it's all bad. I can't bad believe... News bears. I can't believe Germany broke the DMZ. Such an untrustworthy <laughs> fellow. <laughs> yeah, what are they doing moving into the North Sea after already moving into the English Channel the turn prior? <laughs> I love Why that did Holland move, move to the Helgoland Bight and back to Holland <laughs> instead of moving into the North Sea and doing something involving the English Channel? Why? I... Why, Captain Me? I have no idea. I cannot answer these questions. Alright, you're saying this game is going to show us the value of having two people 
who just will legitimately work together forever. Because Germany and Russia have had so many opportunities to stab each other, and we're just not even discussing them. And as a result, they are both still in the game. Yep. Um... Like, Germany was down to like two centers, but now he's back to eight. He's a dominant power on the board. Yep. If you can find that ally who'll just stick with you forever, it's a fantastic strategy in diplomacy to just stay with them. I would like everyone to know that ally is me. <laughs> that that ally is me. I am that ally. Yeah. I stick with you. Um, Captain uh, can attest to this. I'm sure, yes. Um, <laughs> I so, legitimately don't think I've ever stabbed you in a game of diplomacy. Have we ever been allied? Oh, I mean, hey, that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, so looking, th there's one other thing on this board I want to talk about, uh, and that's what, Austria. Venice holding? Uh, well, Venice holding is kind of okay, I think, because you know that this French unit is about to be retreating, right? Yep. So you, a, you prefer to retreat. keep it's the... Just... Uh, ridiculously good for Austria. It is very good for Austria. The other thing we need to talk about are the Austrian moves. Albania support hold Greece, despite or it not needing support hold, yeah, and staying no in Albania. Next to Greece. Um, just... You don't take Serbia, you don't back off to Trieste, you just stand in Albania, and Russia deciding to support the Austrian into Romania for no reason at all. I like, mean, Russia was playing two under. Russia's still getting to build. This way, Austria doesn't attack Russia. Yeah, but... Although, this looks an awful lot like Austria attacking Russia, if you ask me. <laughs> but it's with Russian support. What, I mean, what exactly. does Russia, Russia think is, is asking come Austria from this? and saying, hey, I will explicitly let you attack me. Please attack me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking it would make sense to pump Austria up if you wanted to use him to attack someone else. But as is, the only people Austria can possibly attack are Germany or Russia. And they're both Russia's allies. Well, one of them is Russia, which is the best ally you can possibly get. You don't want people to, to go after them. Um, so, why are you giving Austria supply centers? Why are you not just moving Warsaw to Galicia and crushing him out of existence? It doesn't make sense. I guess the only explanation is that maybe Germany is saying, hey, Russia, you need to be counterbalanced. I need someone to be there in the south with units. Um, but well, That's not going to be me taking Sweden. Nope. <laughs> it still doesn't make any sense. Yeah. There's so much wrong on this board. I think the Russian gets a bit of a free pass from us because the French moves were so bad that we're focusing on them instead. But... Supporting the Austrians in Romania, I think, is just a blunder. There's no way you can justify that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can ensure Austria doesn't take anything else from here, I think it's fine. The problem is, I don't think you can make that assu assurance. Serbia looks mighty Austrian now. Yeah, I think so, too. Like, I... I would place money on Austria taking another Russian dot within the next, like, two years. Um, at least one. Well, probably at most one also, but <laughs> they're gonna get Vienna as well, and that's not gonna be good for the Russian. This is not the person you want to to become a, a power again. Um, <sighs> okay. Shall we go to winter? <laughs> Please. Let's go to winter. Winter 19... Oh, Austrian fleet. Holy shit. And Russian wave. That is that is Holy a wave, right? Holy shit. It's a Russian wave, but yes. I don't think it's a Russian wave. I think Russia has 11 on the board. No, Russia has 10 on the board. I just counted them. Um, 1, well, 2, 3, 4, 5, five. 6, yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, and... Austrian fleet? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, okay, Austria is committing to this. Um, okay, that's why Russia gave Austria the unit. It, it's pretty Austrian fleet because it gets there faster. So, yeah, what? 
Okay, so Russia wants Austria on the board so that the Austrian fleet can harass the French, allow Russia to take Turkey, and so Russia can get out into the Mediterranean. Austria actually That's followed brilliant. through on building the fleet. So, I mean, there's like five Russian armies around Austria. If I'm if I'm Austria, I don't think I have the um, leverage yet <laughs> to make a stab. This is true. Um, so... Are we going to say that that wasn't a blunder from the Russian? I guess we have to see what Austria does still, because I'd still say Austria needs to take Russian dots in order to stay competitive here. Um, and if you actually let Russia out into the Mediterranean, he has no further use for you. So... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if I'm Austria, Albania to Serbia, Trieste to Albania. Hey, France, you want to support me into Greece, please? Yeah. And then, like, Romania is obviously going to get knocked out, so you just back it off and take Vienna. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's clearly not as much of a blunder as we thought it was, despite the fact that I still think it's not a great move to support and to give Austria an SC here. Um, let's... Head on over to spring 1926. And that's a lot of movement arrows. Um, well, okay. Any thoughts from you? Why? Why, Why? On which one? Why are we leaving just conceding England? Yeah, that was what I thought you might be talking about. The Wales to Spain convoy is, like, usually it, you think, okay, I need to get my armies back to France, I need to consolidate them, but the same thing can be accomplished here with Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Spain, um, without abandoning Liverpool and London. So, well, Liverpool specifically, London was lost, so maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. But army in Spain doesn't do a whole lot more than a fleet in Spain does. Uh, right. If you convoy an army back to Gascony, I think that's very reasonable. Gascony just does all of the defense you could ever possibly want in a unit. But you already you have, have an one. army in Gascony. Uh, okay, if you had combined this with something like Marseille support Gascony to Burgundy and convoy into Gascony behind just to try and backfill. It wouldn't have worked because Piedmont would be cussing, but I could kind of understand it. Um, also, if you'd have done this while supporting Marseille up to Burgundy, specifically so that you had an army to knock out the German uh, army here, that also could have made sense, I think. But, yeah, it... <laughs> I don't know, I think France's position has become a little bit hopeless. Um, it looks tough, but remember you've still got Tunis and Naples, right? Those uh, extra French supply centers help a lot. Well, the thing is they're being used to maintain these three southern French fleets, which are just being used to hang around at the moment and keep those those supply centers, so they aren't really helping all that much. If you took away those units and those supply centers, You'd actually have one extra unit to build back at home and, and defend with. True, <laughs> oh, but you actually don't have to break France from the north. Mm. Like, it's just so hard to break Mid Atlantic Ocean, Portugal, Spain, Marseille, and Gascony. Yep, that's true. Although, like, these fleets are going to be tied down keeping Naples, right? The only fleets that you're getting in the south are the. French ones, so they need to get back to Lyon, Western Mediterranean, North Africa kind of area to try and hold Mid Atlantic, and I don't think they get there. Well, no, they do if you just abandon Naples, um, but then you don't keep enough supply centers to hold. <laughs> it's a hard situation for the Frenchmen. Yeah, probably. Um, and yeah, fantastic for the German. Goes plus London, plus Paris. It is only spring, so he does have to hold them, but it looks like he's likely to get Brest as well here. Um, or Brest instead. 
plus you've gone back into Rome. Um, you got another unit through to Burgundy, so you're still threatening Marseille, even though uh, the army in Spain can support hold it, so that's less of an issue. Um, all around pretty fantastic uh, for the German. The only thing of yours that's under threat is Vienna, which I think at this point you just consider to be lost. Um, yeah. When your nearest unit to Vienna is Piedmont, it's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, that that Austrian army is going to take Vienna, 100%. Uh, Austria just holds in uh, Albania and goes to Adriatic, which was presumably what the Russian wanted him to do. Um, and Russia supports the Turkish army up to Armenia, which is, I assume for show, it looks like it's a, uh, oh, but actually you'd expect Black Sea to go to Constantinople if it was just for show, right? With support? No. I'll give it up, man. <laughs> Okay, so the the move to Armenia is the uh, counter to Sevastopol to Armenia, I guess. But then you would expect okay. Constantinople to Ankara to cut the support for that move. Um, but it doesn't. It goes to Smyrna with support as well. It's hard to read. This is the time where you really need the press. And, like... The press for this game is available, so maybe after we're done with this recording, I might actually go back and read over the time between 24 and 26, because this is really hard to comprehend from just a board perspective. <laughs> it's so confusing. I also assume that's why I've been the only one talking for a little bit here, right? <laughs> this is completely ridiculous. <laughs> it's completely absurd. Not only are the Turkish moves, like, kind of weird, not particularly good at defending anything but russia didn't do anything russia did nothing not one of russia's units in the south did anything <laughs> they russia got into clyde in the north so they did one thing i said the south i said yeah. the south i put yeah. a qualifier on it that's but true if it wasn't for norwegian sea and norway none of the rest of russia's units did anything and they waved a build last turn um it's Okay, I'm assuming that the Russian is saying is like getting ready to take Romania here, um, and take Constantinople at the same time. The it should be noted that the French fleet take... didn't. Sorry, go on. Why not just take Constantinople? Why not at least try to take Constantinople? Yeah, and or like... try to take Armenia. Why not try to do something? It's so odd. This is a phase you need the press for, like 100%. Hey, um, Goldie, if you're still watching these, maybe you could comment below uh, and tell us what happened here. <laughs> because we sure as hell don't know. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, fair play. Amazing, amazing play by the German here. Um, getting into everywhere he needs to and getting the, well, making progress against the French. Which isn't always the easiest thing to do. Uh, shall we skip ahead to the fall here? Please. Let's go to fall 1926. Uh, okay. Well, first okay, thing... so Russia is just saying, nope, I don't care. Turkey, you're fine. That's hilarious. So Russia is trying to get Turkey to build a fleet, I assume. That's the That's point hilarious. of these moves. Um, why not just take the center and build something yourself? I guess because you don't want to become the power that everyone goes after. Uh, so, you're saying that, hey Turkey, you be my fleet, fleet building power in the south, so I look less strong than I am? But then but you're Austria's also saying... already your fleet building power in the south. <laughs> yeah! It's like, hey, he Russia is resurrecting everyone, and here, hang on, Italy also took Naples here, <laughs> so Italy yeah. is back on the board as well. Italy is building one, Austria is building one, and Turkey is building one, although staying neutral. Yes, and Russia is out of the Black Sea, um, which is 
nice for Turkey, I suppose. Well, are all of the Eastern powers aligned at this point? What? Like, Russia, I get puppeteering, but this feels like a, a little bit over the top. Um, it's so ratty. A rat <laughs> with an Italian on board. To be fair, I don't think the Italian like is necessarily part of this. They just seem to have been ass assisted by the assisted by the German. Um, but yeah, it could well just be the four powers over here have all been brought back to life. But as Russia, you don't want this to happen because once these powers are all aligned again, they're going to fight over the Balkans, and you already had that. <laughs> You didn't need that to be forced over. I mean, look, if, if Austria just keeps building fleets and stays on two armies, you're probably feeling okay. Okay, there's zero chance that Austria builds another fleet here. Like, even if what? Russia tells him to, Russia is now... Like, Austria can make a pitch to, to Turkey to say, hey, the two of us should try and survive together. Let's go for it. Maybe we can ass get assistance from that French fled... It, uh, French fleet in the Aegean Sea um, because they're not too happy with the Russians right now um, and, you know, knock him back I think that that's a that's a pitch I would probably take as Turkey here, right? You don't want to be puppeteered by the, the Russian uh, completely yeah, if you have I a mean, chance of getting Austria back Canopo in is guaranteed to fall if Russia wants it yeah, but the Austrian is in a position where they could come in and, and start well, actually Aegean can help uh, the Turkish fleet into cool. Bulgaria, right? Or to to hold in Constantinople. I'm assuming the Jiang is taken off the board when France goes down. Oh yeah, actually, it's an obvious choice. <laughs> uh, man. Okay, maybe maybe. Turkey will just work with the Russian, uh, but I I don't think that takes away the Austrians' ability to start attacking the Russian here. Um, I mostly agree. Right. I think Austria's best chance to hope that other people build too many fleets around him, and he can just sort of build a couple armies and then be the dominant army power on the board. Wait, are you expecting Fleet Venice? <laughs> I really hope yes. it's not Fleet Venice. I'm expecting Fleet Venice, dude. Why would you Fleet Venice? You can take Rome back. Why would Germany allow Italy to build Army Venice? I mean, it doesn't matter what Germany allows, you just do it anyway. Well, Germany's building Army Munich, right? If Italy builds Army Venice, then Piedmont supports Munich into Tyrolia, and then Tyrolia into Venice, and then you're just dead. Hmm. Yeah, okay, but I suppose. Venice, you tell Germany, I can't do anything to you, man. I'm going after Tunis. But, oh, that just feels so bad. Wait. Oh, I don't disagree, but it feels bad to have a German in Rome and Piedmont <laughs> when I'm on two centers. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I mean, maybe you can get the Austrian to assist you, because Austria has fleet Adriatic. I doubt they want to see the German grow, right? Um, they certainly don't want to see the German come down to Tyrolia. Uh, but I guess the Austrian doesn't want to see the Italian grow either, so... <laughs> it's so... This situation is so confusing. Russia, why did you make our lives difficult? Like, what have you done? Just added on an extra ten years to the game, just so we're clear. Maybe more. Probably more. <laughs> okay, Russia, you are responsible for the length that this game went... We are calling it now. If we if we see another thing that happens that makes it even longer, then okay, we'll shift the blame off of you. But right now, you are like, the primary culprit. Yes. Okay. Remember the turn like a couple of years ago when Germany and Russia could have just killed Turkey and Austria, Italy and Austria. Yes. And they just chose not to. I think Germany deserves an equal share of the blame. Okay, that's actually true. Um, although but France deserves the most blame because France could have just sold if you played a little bit differently in the start, but or like gone up to the stalemate line. France kind of by by backing off and letting his power level go down. France kept this game going for the first few years, but now now the blame has shifted. Now it is no longer the France's blame. Has indeed shifted. Um, <laughs> so okay, France, you have won in that respect. You are no longer the person we are blaming for this game going on forever. 
Uh, we should, instead of having a power rankings, just have a who is to blame for the length of this yeah. game rankings. Yes, the blame rankings. <laughs> okay, next next episode, I'm going to switch it to that. Um, blame rankings, yeah. Whose fault is it that we're still here? All right, well, um, I have to builds. So, yeah, if we, if we go forward to builds here, we've got one Austrian build and we've got uh, still one Russian build, I think, because they delayed before. We have still one Russian build. We have an Italian build, a German build, a Turkish build, and we have a billion French disbands. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to do any predictions on those, or shall we just go ahead to it? We've already talked about these for a while, right? We've we, talked about we have. the fleets versus the armies. We talked about Turkish builds, etc. We didn't talk much about French disbands. I said I thought a gene was going off the board. Um, yeah, um, Aegean definitely. I'd need to actually count how many senses the French is losing. I think it's only two. So uh, no, it's three. Count. It's three. London, Paris, and Naples. Um, so as France, you probably disband Irish Sea, Aegean, and I don't know, maybe Tyrrhenian? Or actually Brest seems like the right thing to go. You've got too many yeah, armies Brest there. Is going... Burgundy is pretty reasonable too, right? Burgundy's not going to do anything either? Yeah. Burgundy can retreat to Ruhr, though. Never mind, yeah. Burgundy. Ruhr Never mind. is... Because Germany is only getting one build. I think, yeah, you keep Burgundy. Yeah, Burgundy uh, can go to Ruhr. Let's go ahead and find out. Um, let's do it. Burgundy goes. Okay. Brest goes and Jean goes. You keep Liverpool. I didn't even realize yeah. that Irish Sea had gone to Liverpool. I don't That's like. Not... Okay, man. Sure. Mm. I mean, it's Whatever. far from the worst thing that France has done. Um, Today? Brest, Brest and Aegean feel like the right choices. Uh, but yep, Burgundy does not. Yeah, bigger deal. We see, in fact, armies from Italy and Austria, baby. Yep. Which is bad news for Russia and Germany, respectively. Um. Unless Austria is planning to push that army into Venice, which is a possibility. What uh, if it gets convoyed into Apulia? <laughs> oh god. Hey what? Italy, please support Trieste to Apulia, and I'll support you into Rome. I promise oh, I won't do anything nefarious god. while I'm there. No way. Okay, if an army is getting convoyed into Apulia, surely it's Albania. You don't convoy Trieste. Um, but Trieste is trying to convince Italy that you're not going to take Venice. Well, why don't you just take Venice? <laughs> just like, you need to convince you just, Italy that you're okay, not taking Venice. Okay, you just don't mention that you're going to Apulia. Convoy Albania over and move Vienna Anyways, to Tyrolia. Anyways, you hope to do it in super secret stealth mode. <laughs> mm. doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, or you actually go after Russia here because Russia has, like, five armies on this front, and Turkey will soon be dead, so you, well, maybe not actually because Russia is puppeting them, but this is the only time Turkey can have units there that can help you. Um, yeah, and all of these Russian armies kind of have nothing else to do with their lives, except sit around and look at Galicia and Romania and Serbia and say, I want all of those centers, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, obviously... hypothetically. Sorry, go on. Hypothetically, let's just look at a very simple tactical attack from Russia, okay? We're going to move all of the units we have as close to Austria as quickly as possible. So hypothetically, Greece supports Bulgaria to Serbia, Ukraine to Galicia, Sevastopol to Romania. Yep. Four I just realized, border. nothing even borders Romania. <laughs> that's, just, that's just guaranteed to work. And then if Austria wants to bounce you out of Galicia and Serbia... Then they have to use all three of their units to do so, and then their fleet and Adriatic, whatever, man. Yep. So oh, at that point, Austria. Austria needs to have Turkish assistance, and Turkey is also in trouble. Uh, I and I don't think this situation gets any better for Austria if they just leave it and hope that Russia doesn't attack them. I think they have to hope that Russia doesn't attack them right now. Make a move to take Serbia, and then try and get another army down. But you can't get another army well, down because you lose is, Romania. Yeah. As soon as you move yeah. into Serbia, it has to be a false stab where you take Serbia and then you yeah. can build in Budapest and then hope you have enough. But like... If, yeah, I don't know, man. If okay, Russia maybe... doesn't go after Romania, 
I don't understand why he wouldn't now. He, he, he should stab now. There's no reason I can see not to, right? Maybe you want to kill Turkey first? Um, which is fair, but then why didn't you do it last turn? Yeah. Hmm. The question why didn't you do it earlier, I suspect, is going to be a question we ask many times this game. <laughs> yep. Many times more than we already have. Well, uh, something interesting to consider. Do you think that Munich army is going to come down to Tyrolean now that Italy has built an army? Probably. Right, I don't think you need the other army in the west. You've already got Brest. Like, you're, you can take Brest from Picardy while Paris goes to Burgundy and just call it a day. Yeah, this is like the really sad thing for Italy is... They had good reason to build the army because the French army was in Burgundy and that was hugely threatening to the German. Uh, but now that that army has come off, you're in trouble. Um, well, I guess let's go ahead to spring. Oh no, wait, we need to do our power rankings. <laughs> yeah, and we're still doing actual official power rankings. We yes. have not yet gone to the abominations. Yes. So basically, we're going to switch Germany and France. Okay. And uh, Austria yes. is way ahead of Turkey now. I think so too. Um, would we say that Italy is ahead of Turkey? It's, Turkey is purely surviving because they've been puppeted by Russia at this point. I think Italy has, well, not Venice, but Naples specifically can survive without anyone's assistance. Um, yeah. Turkey has four hostile units surrounding them. I'm kind of counting Greece, but not really. Whereas Italy has at most two bordering any center. So I think Turkey's position is worse than Italy's. All right. Let's flip them over too then. Um, and it's pretty clear Such Russia movement. is still in first. Germany is still in second. Yeah. Hilariously. If you could... If you had told me that there was a game where Russia and France were at war, and Russia held Greece, while France had three southern fleets, including Ionian and Aegean, and at no point in time did France even attempt to take Greece, I would have slapped you. <laughs> yep. But it happened. Um... Well, okay. We don't know that France will never attempt to take Greece by the end of this game. There is there is time for that yet. There is. Maybe they they will like go sailing with their last few units and go for it <laughs> to try and get Ooh, redemption. No um, well, they should try to get that same fleet, the one that was in Syria, up to Saint Pete. Oh, right? that was Tyrrhenian Sea, right? <laughs> They're just gonna do the the loop of the board. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Was it? Yeah, because it. It came back from Eastern Mediterranean. Yeah, it was June is the one that did it. Yeah, so that fleet yeah. in Tyrrhenian Sea. If that fleet makes it all the way up to St. Pete, that fleet will have done some moves. I'm going to see where that fleet spawned, actually. I'll let you keep doing some actual commentary. Okay. Well, in terms of builds, we've pretty much gone over everything that's happened here. Um, the two army builds are going to be the most interesting ones. And, like, the most interesting thing here is what does Austria do? What does Russia do? Do... Does Russia actually continue to puppet these nations? That seems like it would be a mistake. Um, or does he just take the supply centers... <laughs> oh, sorry. Does he just take the supply centers that are laid out there for him and, uh, you know, roll over this? Um, there is some argument to don't take supply centers you could always take because they make you look bigger and scarier and you know you can take them later to get to 18 but in this case feels like at least the austrian ones if you don't take them now austria is going to strike first and then you're going to be in trouble so we'll see what happens there um Ezio, should i move ahead to spring without you or are you still uh yeah move ahead to spring i'm trying to see where this fleet spawned dude this fleet sat in tunis for a long time, man. <laughs> okay. Right, well, I will go into spring 1927. You're going to hear some pure meme commentary. No Ezio here now. Um, and we do see the Russian going for Romania. Not quite... Wait, what? Why? Okay. 
<sighs> we see the right. Russian supporting a move into Romania despite no enemy units being adjacent to it, not going to Galicia and self-bouncing in Serbia. So it's like a pro-Austrian take of Romania. Um, sorry, you, you mentioned you are back, is that correct? Uh, I think so. We're looking at spring 1927, right? Yes. Yeah, I got here. Okay, so where did that uh, Turkish fleet go? And uh, not Turkish uh, fleet, French fleet. Fond in Marseille, moved to Gulf of Lyon, Turnian Sea, sat there for a long time, remember? It did some convoying of Italian units around, eventually took Tunis, sat in Tunis for a long time, I think 10 plus years, and then moved into Ionian, Eastern Med, Syria, and has now made its way back to its home in Turnian Sea. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's been on a grand expedition. Um, we will be very sad if that unit comes off the board now. Right. Uh, so what do you think of this Russian attack here? Goes into Constantinople, goes into what Romania, attack. but without, without like properly attacking either power. I mean, I think the move to Constantinople is not an attack. I think that's going to move through, is the idea. Right. That um, makes sense. But... The self bounce in Serbia while supporting himself into Romania, like. And the self bounce in Sev? I don't know, dude. It's keeping their units in position to move further, right? But without actually. while trying to aggravate their allies the least possible. Um, we do see Piedmont getting supported back to Venice. No, not Venice. To Tyrolia. Uh, and Rome supporting hold Venice against a potential Austrian attack, which is interesting. Plus, the Austrian fleet getting supported out into the Ionian Sea. There's quite a lot going on here. Um, and the Austrian yeah. maneuvers round to Budapest and to Trieste. Uh, so just defending their three homes, not even going for Serbia here, which turns out to be the right move because that unit in Romania would uh, knock him back out again if not. It's, it's got to be painful for the Austrians to see this, though. You're like, what can I even do against this? I know he's like being nice while he's taking my senses, but he's still taking my senses and advancing on me. Yeah. I mean, he didn't take Serbia, right? Like, I don't think he wants to take anything else. Mm. Which is the weird part, but... Do we expect Russia to just support Armenia into Smyrna this next turn? Because that's what I expect. That's what I think I would do in the Russian position. Just take the builds. Are they, like... Just okay. get Turkey off the board! So the argument is... Turkey supports Aegean through to Ionian at your command, right? You try and get uh, Constantinople out to the Aegean, um, and then you've got three allied fleets there instead of just the one, uh, which those two Turkish fleets are under your control command because you can kill them whenever you want if they do anything against you. Yeah, but that makes them not under your command. <laughs> he feels the pressure, and he's like, I'm gonna need to try to take Greece at some point. Yeah, that's the big downside, right? Um, there is some potential that the Turk defects once they get far enough away that they can grab a center and run. I think that center will more likely be Tunis than it will be Greece. Um, if they can get there, then get into that center, then they'll turn around and start supporting things against the Russian. But it could be Greece, yeah. I suppose. If those two Turkish fleets hypothetically get their way into Naples and Tunis, you're just never going to break it. Yep. Even to, to be fair, even if they just get into Tunis, they can start supporting Austrian and Italian units against you, uh, and even French units if <laughs> if this Frenchman keeps the Tyrrhenian Sea Fleet, which I think we've mentioned we hope he does, just for uh, the memories of of the Crusades. Um, <laughs> so, Naples supporting Adriatic to Ionian, good move by the Italian gets uh, the Austrian fleet off of their back and opens them up to try and take Rome back, potentially. Um, it also forces the French to defend Tunis now, right? Because otherwise the uh, that looks like the most obvious place for the Austrian to go. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, these... Like, we haven't talked about the northern moves at all yet. These uh, moves up here seem to be mostly mopping up things, getting Liverpool, um, taking it in the guaranteed way. Germany just being defensive while they take Brest um, in a guaranteed way. <laughs> and the move from Belgium to Holland is a little bit... It's not really aggressive against the Russian, but it is saying, you know, I've got these units here ready to move against you if I need to. Uh, so don't make me do anything. Um, but yeah, not a, a ton more to say about this. France doing what they can to defend, but most of their centers up here are lost. There's not really much they can do about that. And down here, they just try to force the German army out of Piedmont, which it, it leaves anyway, so... Yeah, and this is actually a remarkably effective defensive position, because with Spain, Marseille, Piedmont, that doesn't get broken on land ever, right? Yeah, that's true. And so... Uh, not ever. It takes a while, and like if Germany, I mean, Germany's in Rome, which is of course makes it weird, because yeah, if 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 Germany just reforces Piedmont, then it's going to fall again. But like, this is an annoying position for Germany to break. Yep. Um. Although you do have to disband. No, you you can keep Bidalansig, right? Because you got Tunis. Uh. But then you lose Tunis. After Eventually, that. Eventually, yes. So you do get cracked just by the, the fleets coming down through the Mid-Atlantic, yeah. but while you're only being attacked on land, this is, this is solid. Um, and given that stalling is the most important thing, you'll, you'll be okay. But, like, France, remember, was at, like, 14 or 15 centers, right? Yep. And, like, it was by far the strongest station on the board. We should not, he should not have let himself get into a position where he is close to being eliminated. Yep. Four supply centers, not what you want to see. This was pretty much entirely on France. Things like disbanding the English Channel in that turn. It, it felt this like... quiet back to North Atlantic Ocean instead of bouncing Norwegian. Yep. And uh, just... I mean, the, the French uh, decision to hold the line and just stay in this Cold War position of I'll... I'll go for my solo eventually, but for now I'll just stay here. Um, really backfired. <laughs> position was not a stable one, right? There, it wasn't like everyone had an equal number of units in the area and they were forced to continue self-bouncing forever, right? Furthermore, while Russia and Germany didn't disband anything in the north ever, remember Russia disbanded Syria before he disbanded anything in the north, France removed northern units, Yep. frequently and as a result though it was a tentative balance just became completely not and then it was exacerbated of course by a misorder which can blow up any position yeah but... um but i think like if i was looking at one single move that made this happen i think it would be disband the english channel instead of disband the eastern mediterranean that yeah was probably what caused germany to to take the jump here and go for him uh, yeah, again, it's a weird thing, right? You think disbanding a unit near a potential ally is going to make that ally more likely to work with you because you are less of a threat to them. But it usually does the opposite because you are less able to defend yourself and you're less of a threat to them, so they have fewer reasons not to attack you. Yes. Diplomacy is not a game about like being nice to people and hoping they're nice to you in return. You have to make make it clear that them being nice to you is their best strategy. <laughs> yeah, and like there are times, of course, where you need to demilitarize things, de-escalate tensions, because if you're allies with someone in every build that you build, you just add another unit to your border with them. Yeah, that's a waste. But if, <laughs> if you already have that border, it's difficult to be the first person to get rid of units. You need to try to find a way to make it simultaneous. And so disbanding units on that border usually just makes them look at it and says, oh, this used to be a Stanley, but now it isn't. Well, what else are my units going to do? I guess they're going to attack you. Yep. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, that's our recap of the game so far. Shall we uh, 
go ahead to full 1927 here. I do want to say that I think Germany is backing off now, right? That's why they took from Gascony yeah. instead of Picardy. No, I mean, Gascony is the guaranteed way to get it, right? Otherwise it could get cut and bounced. But they could have supported him from English Channel. And they also supported themselves back into Tyrolia, right? Yes. So it does look like they're not going after the Iberian centers. So France should be safe, at least for the short term. The interesting thing is, what is Germany doing past that point? Are they going after Russia? If so, why didn't they go to North Sea? Uh, maybe they're just positioning to be able to go after Russia, but then Russia now is tipped off that that might be the case. Well, yeah, this is an exciting position. I, I want to see some of the turns. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead to fall 1927 then. Cool. Okay. It looks like that's what's happening. Uh, Germany is going after Russia. Well, no, because they should have gone to Cilicia if they were doing that, surely. Um. Cilicia seems better than Berlin, but I think they're still going after Russia. Wait, but they didn't support themselves in the North Sea with three. They took Helgoland Bight. <sighs> This this Germany just likes Helgoland Bight, what can we say? Sucks, man. Helgoland Bight's better, dude! <laughs> um, is there an advantage to getting into Helgoland? You can go to Denmark, but you could do that anyway from the North Sea. I suppose you can take North Sea anyway this turn and still be in position to, like, to go to Denmark. The advantage of Helgoland Bight is that it has fewer borders in the North Sea, right? The North Sea borders more territory and is usually a significantly better territory, but support from the North Sea is worth less than support from Helgoland Bight, because support from the North Sea gets cut more. Yes. So Helgoland Bight is useful if you are specifically trying to convoy into Denmark, Holland, or Kiel. Those are what the Helgoland Bight is the dream for, because it supports those convoys amazingly. But just take the North Sea! <laughs> it's the North Sea. If you're in the North Sea, Russia is suddenly staring at Edinburgh saying, Oh boy! I'm really scared. <laughs> I think here, Russia, Germany was looking at Denmark specifically and saying, if Norway moves to Sweden or Skagerrak, I would need to cover that by going Munich to Kiel instead of Munich to Berlin or Silesia. But, like, it just go to Kiel. Mm, you could also cover that from the north. <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. They actually the can north cover sea. that, too. Oh yeah, the North Sea is a pretty good territory, isn't it? Yep. Uh, it's an odd move. Of, uh, sorry, one second. It's an odd move unless you are trying to agree something with Russia that doesn't mean outright war. Um, but this looks like a pretty like outright war position. <laughs> You are definitely starting to move units back in that direction. Uh, avoiding up from Livonia is usually a precursor to Army Warsaw and then Livonia to Prussia and Warsaw to Silesia. Yep. Like if you see Moscow to Livonia, like probably eighty percent of the time, that's what's coming. Okay, we haven't talked about the south either. We see Romania going up to Galicia, plus Bulgaria backing out of Romania, which makes me think those units are going against Germany too. Because they don't even care about Serbia. They're putting the fleet from Constantinople into Bulgaria, which isn't very yeah. useful. It's like... Wow. <laughs> and, uh... Russia decides to try and get convoyed over to Alba uh, Apulia here? What? I think he's memeing. I think that's a good meme move. <laughs> There's no actual point to it, but just put in the move because it's fun. Mm. And then Austria hilariously wisely rejected the support from France because now Austria can retreat from Ionian into Tunis. Yep. Oh, man. Um, does it end up being wise? They, they can retreat into Tunis, yes. I, I suppose they were going down or center if they no, they were staying even if they didn't. So now they get now a build, get which build. is huge. Yeah. So absolutely ends up being the right call. Um, is France down to three? Uh, Portugal, Spain, and yes. Marseille? Yeah, they are. 
Wow. There's no How way they keep Terenium on now, right? have fallen? Oof. Uh, and um, Italy doesn't bother taking Rome back. They just self bounce Apulia. Um, too worried about the convoy to Apulia, man. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, also, Terulia held instead of moving to Bohemia, which I think is weird if you are expecting any hostility with Russia. And if I presume the move Munich to Berlin and Burgundy to Munich indicates they expect a certain amount of hostility with Russia. Yeah, I feel like Germany is trying to maneuver into a position where they're saying, okay, Russia, look, I'm in a defensive spot against you, I've moved to Heligoland, I'm, you know, I'm not going all out against you, I'm not going to Cilicia, I'm not going to North Sea, I'm not going to Bohemia, but I am in a position where I can defend, so don't attack me. I don't think it's going to work. Um, I think all Germany is doing here is letting Russia get the upper hand on them, which is not something you want to do. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't quite agree. I do think Germany is not going to lose anything to Russia if they fight. Mm, because of the Austrian in the south? or like I think just... Germany just builds fleet Kiel and then moves it into the Baltic Sea, and then Germany is basically impenetrable from the east. Mm. Yeah. Since, well, Russia does have a lot of extra fleets that they're not using right now to attack Germany. That's like Liverpool and North Atlantic Ocean, if they can maneuver that round. Yeah, um, and fair. I, I forgot that France is disbanding so much. It is totally reasonable that France loses its fleets in the West, and in which case Russia then does just crush. I It, I, it, it had not occurred to me that Mid-Atlantic Ocean Irish Sea could get taken off the board, but they totally could be. Yeah, I think you're correct that from the east, Germany is pretty impenetrable, but if Russia can get around from the west, then Germany is in trouble. Uh, yeah, and that's the terror of Russia, right? Most countries, you only have to worry about an attack from a single angle, but when you Russia, they can hit you from everywhere. Yep. Um, yeah, and like... The the other thing Russia has to worry about here is the Austrian. I wonder if he like accepted the uh, the that the Austrian was taking Serbia or if there was some agreement for him not to um, that Austria is just broken because Austria did it simultaneously with trying to grab Greece. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it looks like there was public press about the convoy to Apulia, which is why. France supported Ionian, and why, um, and why Russia made the move, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, it seems that I guess actually the Ionian move to Greece was to cut support against Serbia. So that makes me think this was definitely not like arranged him taking Serbia. Um, And yes, Russia clearly wanted to do something with regards to com getting convoyed across. <laughs> um, and France turns out, like, France had good reason, I think. We haven't discussed this very much. The French support of Ionian that ended up losing Fr France to Tunis. I don't think that's a bad move. Um, it looks like it because of the results of what happened. But if Austria had held, it would have been a good one. The reason doesn't work is because Austria knows he's getting the center anyway, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that support hold is a very solid move. Yeah, because you want to form a coalition against this so that you get to keep Tunis because your unit is being useful. Um, but did not end up working out. Uh, Austria wanted the center and got the center <laughs> on the retreat here. Okay, uh, do we want to talk about anything else here? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is about to be an exciting war where everyone goes against Russia. I think that's likely here, although it would make Germany quite threatening at that point. <laughs> I guess we'll see. This is why Russia should not have let Austria get back to this point. <laughs> Just to, to... Yeah, Austria is a big important power in this position with four armies and Tunis. 
Yep. Okay, uh, let's go ahead to the builds here. Um, winter 1927, Austrian army build, makes sense. Uh, France disbands both their armies and a fleet. They're going full Germany on this. They're going all fleets. Um, Germany didn't go full fleets. Germany? <laughs> I like this. I think this is... It, Tunis is a very likely place for France to survive. And Iberia is plus Marseille is just super fleet-focused. So I think this is really smart. Yeah. And it, it means that that's, uh, that pilgrimaging... French fleet stays on the board, so we've got to be happy about that. Yeah, I believe that's Fleet Turanian Sea still is the, yep. uh, the one to watch. Um, and I, wanna, I hope it gets back into Tunis. <laughs> Just stays there forever? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, so we see the German putting down another fleet as well, as you predicted, go, and that goes to Baltic and sort of makes Germany impenetrable. The Russian does not use Army Warsaw, they go with Fleet St. Petersburg South Coast. Thoughts on that I think that this one? is very reasonable, because, right, France is, or Germany is building this fleet in Kiel, going to Baltic, so you want to contest that. And you have a, a bunch of armies already in Galicia, Ukraine, and Livonia. So you can still make it to Silesia and Prussia this turn with extra pressure on Bohemia shortly after. So I think the extra army is a little overkill. And if with this fifth fleet in the north, Russia now has plus one fleet over just Germany. So this French fleet in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean is going to be the fifth fleet in for the German-French potential alliance. So I think this is I think it's important that Russia built a fifth fleet. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, the downside, of course, is if Russia ends up in a two-front war here with Austria and Germany, that midsection is going to be quite weak. Uh, but they do have Ukraine yeah. to go up to Warsaw. They can try and contest it. It seems like yeah, something that's difficult to handle either way. In fact, the best way to handle it might be just taking Constantinople and Smyrna and getting those builds. Um, I think if that was the plan, you should have done it this turn. Yes. Because then he can build Warsaw and Fleet Sev, and he can keep pressing south quickly. Yeah, like, but it's pretty clear he didn't anticipate the Austrian taking so and turning on him. Probably, yes. But this build of Fleet St. Pete South Coast, in spite of Austria making this play, means maybe he thinks Austria is not actually going to fight him. It's possible. Um, maybe he thinks think that Austria... I wonder if he thinks that Austria might go anti-Italy here. So there is potential for Austria to do that. Um, there's only two Italian centers. Well, there's uh, anti-Italy as in take Venice, take Rome, take Naples. But, like, th you could do that or you take... Like, how long is it going to take you to get those three centers? Right? You can take Venice maybe this year, assuming Germany and Italy don't coordinate at all, which is unlikely, right? But let's assume they don't. Even if you take Venice, then how are you going to take Rome and Naples? Yeah, like, that's like a three-year trek. Versus, support yourself into Galicia and Albania, and then support yourself into Romania and Greece. Yeah, Maybe it certainly certainly seems more likely that Russia is going to be facing a hard time here. Um, <laughs> yep. Shall we if, see? You? Oh, sorry, gone. I, I would if Bulgaria was on the east coast, actually, that fleet, and it could make it back into the Black Sea. I think R Russia would have a much easier time. Because then he can get Ankara back into Constantinople and then into Bulgaria. And then with the Black Sea, you can hold much more effectively. But mm. without that, he's in a rough spot. Yep. Alright, well, let's see how rough of a spot that is and move ahead to spring 1928 here. <laughs> Not 27. Oh um, my god. German NMR, French NMR. <laughs> <sighs> And that actually works out really badly for the Russian, I think, because if their units had gotten bounced, they might be in a decent position to contest the Austrian. Holy uh, Toledo! Well... <laughs> so, okay, a few things that happened here. Obviously nothing in this entire region over here. Russia makes progress into the Irish Sea, which isn't all that meaningful. It can attack Mid-Atlantic Ocean, which is a plus. Um, yeah, that's, so it is kind of meaningful in that respect. Uh, gets into the North Sea, which is very big. 
um, Russia gets into Prussia and Bohemia, but if you look in the south over here, Romania has just been taken by the Austrian, Austria positioning in Albania as well. Um, this is not looking like a good situation for the Russian right here. It's looking much better for the Russian than if Romania had been taken from Budapest instead. Yes. Clearly, the, now it's just it. clearly the Austrian was scared of the Russian just attacking Budapest, which is perfectly legitimate. Totally, totally possible, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, if Budapest had gone to Romania here, Bulgaria would also just die. <laughs> But, like, Greece, he's still got a... No, he doesn't have a guess on Greece, because there's only the Austrian there's unit in Albania, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, not terrible for the Russian, but not great either. Um, but Romania is guaranteed. There's only the one unit in Sev that borders Romania. Yeah. Neat. Mm. But That's Khan be... makes it back to Bulgaria. Turkey is not dying, dude. Uh... Is Turkey not dying? The uh... Khan's gonna go back to Bulgaria, dude. I mean, I suppose, it, yeah, it probably does. Um, as Russia, do you not just take the build? If, I mean, look, if we were gonna take the build, we'd have taken it last turn. Or the turn before. It's a little more desperate now, though. If you see Smyrna and Constantinople open here, I feel like you just go for them. Um... You know, say, screw Bulgaria for the moment. If he really wants it, sure. I'll, I'll send Greece there to bounce it, because there's only one adjacent unit anyway. And just take these two Turkish dots. I make um, no claims about the correctness of Constantinople moving to Bulgaria, about it being the best move in this situation. I continue to make have no opinions about that. I predict we will see Constantinople to Bulgaria. Right, because it fits with what the Russian has been doing so far. Keeping Turkey puppeted. Um, and, you know, I guess as the Russian it, would, it feels good to have one ally, which is like exactly more than zero. Yes. It's the weakest juggernaut, at, like the weakest Turkey I've ever seen in this juggernaut, but like, dude, the juggernaut's juggernaut, man. <laughs> yep. It's a strong alliance, and it's in Ionian, which is quite useful. Uh, if they could... I wonder if they were, like, obviously it wouldn't have worked because the fleet in Tunis cuts Ionian, but if the Frenchman had not NMR'd, would he have taken that support into Naples? It's an interesting question. He's kind of avoided showing his hand here, which is <laughs> fun. Yeah, by NMR, no one knows what you're planning. <laughs> yep. Um, Next time on our guide to why you should NMR more frequently than you do. <laughs> yeah. so I want to do that in a face-to-face -face tournament at some point. Just, just like not get my orders in. Just like be out of the room or something. Deliberately, yeah. Yeah. And then just be like, oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I really wish I could have support held you at that part on the stalemate line, but whoops. I guess that didn't happen. <laughs> you know. can absolutely do it in virtual face-to-face -face events, right? Um, there's usually... Like, the GMs will be annoyed at you if you outright NMR. There's usually grace periods and stuff on. But you can put one order in, and then hit submit, and then just not put anything else in, let the face go over, and then go, Oh, I put the rest of my orders in. I thought, like, I must have forgotten to click submit again. Because I, I submitted my initial thing. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm fairly sure that, that does happen from time to time. Uh, hey, maybe I'll do it in the DBNI final. We'll see. <laughs> I, mean, I would love so much for you to intentionally NMR in the DBNI finals. <laughs> okay, if you all do see an NMR in the uh, DBNI finals from me, you now know it was completely intentional. There is no possibility that I've just so messed up we, because I'm What we should really player. say is all of Mean's <laughs> opponents, potential opponents in the DBNI finals, you should start watching all 12 hours of this review that'll be out by then. <laughs> 
because you need to get some hints because Miam is explaining his strategy for the DBNI final. Yes, and here I go into my strategy. No, I, I am not going to talk any more about said strategy. <laughs> yeah, he's going to intentionally NMR at some point. Uh... Just make a stalemate line against Miam, and he's going to screw it up at some point. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Yes. Hilarious how effective that strategy against the bots, by the way. Sorry? You... The... Hilarious how effective that strategy is against the bots. Just deliberately NMRing? No. Deli no. Just <laughs> forming a stalemate line and waiting for them to screw it up. Oh, okay, yes. It should be noted for our viewers here who don't play on web diplomacy, we're talking about the Facebook AI bots, right? No, we're not talking about the Facebook AI no, bots. We're talking the about the University of Montreal bots that play Gumboat on that site. Um, they're not great. <laughs> they're, they're fantastic in the early game. Um, and, like, it's actually very impressive, especially considering I think it was a one-man project. Um, the, But towards the end game, they are not good at forming stalemate lines. <laughs> Yeah, it's a single country will form stalemate lines sometimes, but not guaranteed. And if the stalemate line ever requires more than two powers to coordinate, it just never happens. Hmm. Um, they, just, they just don't. People who don't play Gumboat might think that that's a common thing in Gumboat. Actually, at a high level in Gumboat, people will be able to figure out, you know, what do I need to do to hold this stalemate line? Who do I need to ally with? Where do I need to get to? Kind of thing. You do... There is a considerable amount of un of communication you can do without actually uh, being able to talk. Um, but that's beyond yeah, the... I, I... I pride myself on joining the live gunboat games on web diplomacy when people have NMR'd near the end and I realize they need someone to take over this country to form the line and then do it and then yank yourself some easy draws and draw size scoring. <laughs> but there have been so many times where I've taken over positions like that only to get cut by people who are throwing and then the solo happens anyways. I just, ugh. Ugh. Yeah, okay, so I should say I some gumboat players know how to hold a stalemate line, not all of them. Um, and high level ones do. Like, yes, at a high level they almost always will, and like, while we're on the subject of bots, this is completely unrelated to this game, but I'm actually really oh, ex excited for uh, web diplomacy's um, bots, because the Facebook AI uh, F-A-I-R, Facebook AI Research, and uh, their head guy, Noam Brown, um, has been working on a diplomacy AI for web diplomacy. It's not released yet, uh, but it is actively playing and actually has a higher gunboat rank than most players on the site. I think it's at, like, number 26 at this point. We're also planning to do a video about the bots at some point, but uh, we'll we'll get to that <laughs> At another uh, juncture, I think. At a later date. Let's get back to this game right now. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about in this phase? Well, there's a lot less to talk about, considering half of the countries didn't input anything. Venice to Apulia, what do you think about that? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Venice to Apulia. Well, let's see. It's no longer covering a home center, but now it has the potential to be convoyed. <laughs> if they were worried about a convoy to Apulia, they would have bounced it. Yeah, I guess that's the only reason for it. I, I feel like that's the only move we need to analyze here. Shall we go ahead to uh, full 28? Oh, please. Get me out of this. Yep. <laughs> okay. No NMRs this time. Woo. And uh, <laughs> look at those French and Italian supports. <laughs> Just both well, trying to support each other to the Ionian, while the only was unit that Austrian actually... who made the move. Yeah. Um, and Turkey tries to stab Russia here, right? And all um, they end up doing is losing themselves Constantinople. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh my god, we need to clip that. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. That is gonna be a meme. Ouch. This is... This is going to be a meme at some point, when you think you're being clever and then you smack yourself in the face. So I wonder whether... 
like, what's the point of this? Is it, it's because you want to take Greece? Maybe you had Austrian, an, an off, Austrian offer of assistance to go to Greece, so you needed to cut Aegean and go in. I think that's the reason. Um, but Austria was lying. Yeah, that's how you go after Greece. And then, oops, now you lost Constantinople, and now Russia doesn't trust you, and it's probably going to take some... Yep. Um... See, we said earlier, once Turkey took Tunis or Naples, Turkey could then make a move against Russia. That was our original statement, and I believe we he needed to wait until then. Yeah, um, I don't think he was likely to get to Tunis or Naples. I think also, like, this, this is testament to the Turkish player thinking how I was thinking, and going, okay, Russia is probably going to kill me here, so I need to do my last minute land grab um yep as opposed to thinking russia's been doing some nonsense this whole game he's gonna just keep doing some nonsense <laughs> am i right yeah you were reading the player i was reading the board um and i think yeah. turkey read the board not the player and, and paid dearly for it especially like it would have been okay if austria had actually given the support but austria seems to have lied quite a lot going through this so I mean, you got a lie when you're down to one center and you need to get yourself back up, right? Yep. <laughs> That's true. Um... So, like, this is a thing where I think an advantage of looking at games in rapid succession like this in live play style makes it more natural to read the play of your opponent. Um, whereas in the slower more with more time between the phases the easier it is to just think about the board and think about each phase like its own isolated thing yeah. right so when we're looking at the past six years of moves how many days is this real time yeah right? it's two days per phase right so lots is the and answer to that. retreats and builds right and if we assume nobody readies them up ever which people rarely do like it could easily have been multiple months over time and like these emotions of how do i think he's feeling right now don't uh, you, you lose those feelings right yep. and sometimes they do too and so it usually is that everyone is playing similarly but in this case i think russia just has this evaluation that is very different from how turkey looked at it yeah um russia like Russia is going to have a really bad situation from this because Austria gets a build in Budapest again. This is really well played by Austria getting Turkey to turn, uh, and then, you know, he manages to bounce the Russian out of Bulgaria as a result uh, and pick up a build. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, it, it actively it weakens Turkey again, right? Yep. And, like... Now the Russian has to go, okay, do I punish the Turk and take Smyrna here, or do I trust that the Turk will work with me again and try Turkey and... Turkey probably feels up? pretty heavily duped, right? So you can probably work with Turkey from here? Yeah, I think you say, okay, Turkey, if you disband the Eastern Mediterranean, I'll keep working with you. Um, probably something like that, yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, let's have a look at the other parts of the board. We see, um, actually, I think the Italian gets a really good deal here with Apulia going to Rome and Rome going up to Venice. Um, they have... I would be happy with that. They finally have two connected home supply centers instead of two in completely different locations with an enemy unit between them. Um, yeah. or, well, an allied unit, but... All units are enemies, really. <laughs> and you're pretty happy to have the army be in Rome as opposed to Naples, because hypothetically, if we were to say nothing can be an Ionian or Tyrrhenian, you can support Naples to Apulia and then into Venice. Yep. Which is really nice. If you had the fleet in Rome, that's not even close to an option. Yep. Um, yeah, so this could be the start of Italy getting their three home centers back. If they can get these other powers to clear out of Tyrrhenian Sea and Ionian Sea. Or just forget about Naples while they're in there. Yeah, like, but you don't really want to put your fleet... Well, to, to lose Naples in order to get... Put your fleet back gets, in Venice? Well, yeah, you probably wouldn't put your fleet back anyway, right? You'd support Rome up. Um, probably. But, but 
then you can't support yourself back, right? Because <laughs> if you use, if you have the fleet in Apulia support Rome to Venice, for Venice to Rome, you can't make that support. Yeah. Because Apulia can't do it. Whereas if you have Rome support Apulia to Venice, Rome can support Venice back to Apulia. So you're strength two all the way around. This is true. It depends whether you think you're going to keep the rest of your home supply centers or not. Um, yeah. But whatever the case, I think we're agreed this is a much better position for Italy than they were in when they had the Germans in the previous And position. here's where we see the busted nature of the North Sea. Right? Yep. So here we see Germany retake the North Sea with strength three, and Russia wisely says, I can't hold it, let's just get into position in Skagrak in the Baltic Sea. I would have been very tempted if I was Russia to go into Sweden instead of either one of the two, because then when if you go after Denmark, you don't have to worry about it. I would probably go after... I mean, I don't know which, but like I would, I would be really tempted to do one of those two. But the North Sea, after getting kicked out, it not only cut the English Channel, meaning English Channel could not support hold Mid-Atlantic Ocean, guaranteeing the Irish Sea takes Mid-Atlantic Ocean, but it was now able to retreat into Belgium and ensure that Russia gets a build. Yeah, no, Russia... I was going to say Russia gets two builds here, but no, they lose Romania. They gain Constantinople and they gain uh, Belgium. So yeah, they, they do get a build. Um, I don't remember if they had one in the bag. I don't think they did, because they used it on that fleet, St. Petersburg, South Coast, last turn. Uh, but the build will still be huge. St. Peter's, do you think Fleet St. Petersburg North Coast or Army Warsaw? It's got to be one of those two, I think. I agree, it is probably one of those two, but I am, I would, I would build the Army Warsaw here. I, I would, I could see the fleet being correct, though. You just lost the North Sea, you want to take it back. You don't have anything covering Norway. I, I can see the fleet being correct. Yeah. I'm also looking... I just want more armies. Looking at the German moves here, Berlin to Cilicia is a... <laughs> like, if Prussia had gone to Berlin, you're in trouble here, right? I suppose yeah, you're guessing. Both, but... yeah. And you, if you're expecting to make Bohemia retreat, you don't want to attack from Munich. That's true. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you only want to put the units in Cilicia to try and counter a double attack anyway, because I think you're expecting one here, right? Warsaw, Bohemia, Prussia, two of them are probably going to be used on Cilicia. Yeah. In fact, you would expect Bohemia and Prussia to both support Warsaw to Cilicia, and so you're cutting Bohemia support only, and then you're going to bounce with the other, is I think the expectation from Germany here. Yeah, solid movesets if you're expecting that. And getting into Cilicia here, not too bad either. It's not great because yeah. I don't think you have a build. Um, the only danger is if Prussia had moved into Berlin, that would have really... <sighs> yeah, especially since uh, Germany is going minus one anyway because of Belgium, right? Yes. That what? would have been devastating. You kind of have to take Venice off, maybe? Or Bohemia, one of the two. I would... <sighs> Jeez, that's tough. I'd probably take off Bohemia. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the, yeah, this is the power of the North Sea. I almost think it would have been better if Germany didn't force it, but they kind of they needed to get something there, right? I so. think they should have had Helgoland Bight cover Holland. Um, like it's very easy for me to say when we know that Russia didn't try to support hold the North Sea, but no one is going to try to like whatever. It just. Taking it like this means that even if you do succeed, it's going to get a retreat into Holland or Belgium, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so really, you should have self-bounce there. Uh, I think self-bouncing is reasonable. Yeah, self-bouncing self is probably the best. I was thinking of just moving Helgoland Bight into Holland, but you don't want that fleet in the North Sea and Helgoland Bight either. Yes. So yeah, self-bouncing in Holland is definitely correct, and this way, if Norway does anything but support hold the North Sea, you take the North Sea, as would have happened here, and then doesn't get a retreat. Yeah. But whatever. It should be stated, we're kind of overlooking the fact that Edinburgh is now incredibly vulnerable. Um, that's because it's just one supply center, right? Uh, Russia 
it's better for Russia to retreat to Belgium, force the Germans to blow something up and get a build, than it is to guarantee that they hold one centre for one more year. Um, that's probably not that useful anyway. Yeah, the main worry would be if Germany had a viable convoy over to Edinburgh this turn, I think there would be a serious issue. Yeah, um, they kind of don't because of the fleas in Belgium, right? They can't afford to convoy Holland out. Um, that's what I'm looking at. I think London can support the North Sea while Helgeland Bight covers Holland. And then you can convoy the army from Holland over to Edinburgh. That's, yeah. And then if they bounce you out of Holland, you can take Belgium... Brest is a little concerned because of the fleet in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, but I just think you ignore the fleet in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. It's going to do whatever it does. But that forces... Yeah, I think... But I don't know. It's a little concerning. But I do think just getting the build is such a big deal. That army Warsaw is going to affect a lot. Or fleet St. Pete North Coast anyways. Yeah, this whole area over here is going to be a bit ugly for the foreseeable future. It's not a clean war by any means. Um... Yeah, but... the fleet in the Baltic Sea, we're really having, we're, we're feeling us not moving it into Sweden right now. Mm. Um, one of these two fleets, because we really want to be able to attack Denmark. Really, really want to attack Denmark here. Um, but we can't, because it just retreats to Sweden. Yes, and like, I think actually you would have wanted to move Norway to Sweden just because you can build St. Petersburg North Coast right now. Um, but... Yes. Uh, shall we go through to build and see what Germany that's takes good. off? I think that's the most that's important thing. Yeah. Okay, well, Fleet St. Petersburg, North Coast, and we see uh, Army Venice going. Um, okay. Eastern Mediterranean comes off the board. So the interesting thing about Army Venice is it guarantees that Germany loses another center in a year's time, but at the same time, that unit is not helping them against the Russians, so it's kind of like if they left that unit on, they would probably stay as center up um, from their current position, but they'd also have a disadvantage in their homeland. They've chosen to go, on, go for the uh, the more taking aggressive a loan, option. Basically, they're saying we're taking a lead against our future turns by giving us an extra unit right now. Yes. Um, and Austria builds army Trieste, so... Uh, that's interesting. I would have expected Army Budapest. I wonder if they're just going to go for Venice at this point. Say, hey Russia, let's cut a deal. You're clearly you clearly need your units in the north, so I'm gonna make sure that Italy can't get back into this game and harass me. Um, but I don't know that Italy would want to harass Austria right now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Italy wants Venice. And Austria probably also wants Venice, so there's a chance that Venice doesn't get taken as Italy and Austria both fight over it. Yeah, it's potentially true. Um, and yeah, the Eastern Med coming off is probably uh, Turkey making up with Russia and saying, you know, we'll we'll work together again. I'll keep my unit in Ionium working with you. Um, we uh, are we gonna do power rankings here? This I mean, is, it's been two years, right? Yep. Um, I think France is the most notable change here. They're definitely not in third anymore. I think Austria takes that position. Very clearly. Um, and do we keep Russia in first, Germany in second? Or is it... One has 13 centers, one has nine. Yeah. And, I uh, think that Germany is more likely to gain centers in the short term by far than Russia is. But... But Russia still has the stronger power level overall, especially with a fleet all the way over in the Middle Atlantic Ocean. That's yeah. Russia's got a fleet in the Mid Atlantic Ocean and a fleet in the Aegean, right? Like normally, if you say, "Hey, a single power has a fleet in the Mid Atlantic Ocean and Aegean," you're like, "Oh, Italy's having a good game, right? Maybe France is doing well because France has done some nonsense getting the fleet into the Aegean or whatever, right? Or you say, maybe Turkey has broken out. No, no, no. That's Russia." Yep, and that's a northern Russian fleet and a southern Russian fleet, which is always nice to see. I wonder if they're ever going to meet up. Um, but... Maybe they'll be part of the same convoy, eh? <laughs> Always possible. So, I'm going to transition here between our current power rankings and our, well, 
our old power rankings on our current one. Russia in first, Germany second, Austria third. Uh, pretty much going in supply center order here. France in fourth, um, Italy in fifth. Would we consider Italy to potentially be above France? Nope. France does have the more defensible position. Like, Italy has a fairly easy to take SC in Venice. I say fairly, it's not actually all that easy with uh, fleets all around them. Um, yeah, Italy has, like, multiple hostile enemy units around them, whereas France, the only hostile enemy unit is the one fleet in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and France has enough fleets to counter it. Yeah, so. that's fair. Okay, so France in fourth, Italy in fifth, and Turkey all the way down there in sixth, just hoping that Russia does Turkey. not take their center. <laughs> um, let's go to spring 1929. Okay. Okay. Lots of movement. Lots of movement. Holy... Is this a, what a game of diplomacy can look like? <laughs> I didn't realize. Units are allowed to move? I know, right? It's Whoa. insane. I feel like there's been more movement here than there has been in years. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. So, important things. Let's go to the south first, right? Yes. Just Really like the actual early game when we have to like discuss the board in parts because there's so much happening. Mm. So in the south, we've got Austria supporting Turkey back into Greece, and we've got Russia trying to take the last Turkish home center. Yep. So like Turkey is officially going to die in this game at some point. It is only a matter of when. Yep. We've got Russia taking Romania. And Austria predicting this by getting back to Budapest. Interestingly, Russia takes Romania from the least threatening location, right? Um, they're saying, yes. you know, I'm gonna, I'm being nice to you, Austria. I'm doing it in the nice way. Um, yeah, it's also the guaranteed way, right? But definitely nice. I think it would be. No, it wouldn't be guaranteed anyway, unless you moved Greece uh, up to Serbia. Yeah, if Greece cut Serbia, it would have been anyways. But yes, um, we see the Italian getting Venice back and contested, the Austrian not even bothering to try and bounce that, and getting into the Ionian Sea. Plus, Tyrrhenian Sea is vacated, so Italy's looking a lot better right now than yeah, they were. Italy, this was like the greatest possible turn for Italy that he could ever, ever hope for in a million years. Like, just literally the greatest. Yep. Not only that, but he now has a shot at Tunis if uh, the Austrian because the Austrian move to yeah. North Africa has to be to try and meddle with the mental Atlantic Ocean. Um, yeah. Clearly, the thing here is everyone is going, okay, you know, Russia is this massive threat, let's unite against them, but I think as Italy, you don't care about that, you just want Tunis anyway. <laughs> yeah, right? it's like an Austrian fleet in Tunis, and you're like, hey, I'll take Tunis, and then if the Russian fleet retreats to North Africa, I'll be happy to kick him out. I can do that. Yep. You want to be the fleet power. Um, in fact, you want yep. to be a power is probably... <laughs> yeah, but like, Italy is going to have their home centers back. Yep. Feels very good. Especially after being in Fleet Trieste for a while with, like, n an easy way to be killed by the Germans. Yes. A triple bounce in Trieste... When there was no unit in Trieste, it's like, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, here we see Russia really feeling his issue with Sweden, right? He had to use Skagerrak and Baltic to self-bounce in Sweden rather than being able to take Denmark. Yeah, these feel like weak moves on his part. Pressure backs off and then self-bounce, move to Norway. Okay, that's fair. Move to Irish Sea. Yeah, I guess to... the first single channel, right? Yeah, but Problem then you're you giving up. To lose Edinburgh. Yep, but I guess he was expecting to lose Edinburgh anyway. Um, he gets his fleet in Belgium force disbanded here. Um, yeah, good self bounce in Brest by Germany there. Yep, and uh, makes no progress with the Mid Atlantic fleet. It's a painful phase for the Russian. Yeah, and like this wall in the south means that there's no way that fleet gets anywhere. It took four fleets to do it, but Fleet Mid Atlantic Ocean is going north. Yep, and this uh, this French fleet that's been all the way to Syria is very nearly back home. 
<laughs> Snow yeah, in it Western actually started Med. in March 7th. I don't think it's ever been to Western Med yet. I think this is its first time here. Well, congratulations, French fleet. You are finally going to a normal province for the French fleet to be in. Um, so... Well, Terminal C is kind of normal. Well, yes. Okay, but that's yeah. true. But <laughs> another serious. normal... Yeah, a more normal place than you were for the last however many years. Um, so, I mean, Germany does Very good, turn good for news. Germany. Yep. Uh, actually, he's left the North Sea vacant. So Wait, maybe not, not as good. Self-bouncing well, keel. Support... Oh, I misread how that worked. He supported Bel uh, North Sea Down, which is fair, but you think that you send Heligoland out to North Sea, right? Yeah, but he wanted his self bouncing Kiel. Hmm. Uh, Alright, guys, just so you know, self bouncing feels really cool, but it actually looks a lot like having two units hold. Yeah. I don't think that they're moving, but they're actually holding. They're just holding three provinces at once, which is cool, and it's great. But sometimes you've got to take a risk. I wonder if he's trying to de-escalate tensions. Was it value the North Sea? It is, just, it is just very simple. Germany does not care about the North Sea. This particular Germany. <laughs> this right? is pirate you know Germany. He, kept? he uh. kept his feet in the Helgeland Bight again. Yep. Man. I, so I, my theory on this is that Germany is trying to de-escalate tensions with the Russian. Then making moves that are deliberately like, okay, we can stop this war now and start working together again. Um, I know the like... best way to de-escalate tensions. And bear with me. It's when I have all of your centers. There will be no more tension. <laughs> this is the Ezio way. And uh... now there is no more war. <laughs> we are one. Yep. Um, but I have a feeling that after this turn, Germany and Russia may start working together. Um, How although... can they work together when Russia's at 13 with fleets in Mid Atlantic Ocean, Irish Sea, Skagerrak, and the Baltic Sea? Yeah, you kind of have to uh, get Russia to back out of <laughs> a lot of those. And, like, he, why, he says, oh, great, you didn't take the Rose Sea, you're not going to take Edinburgh? Why should I? Hmm. Why should I, meme? <laughs> so, yeah, okay, maybe they will still stay at war. I just, like, hmm, I feel like so the Germany played it too I safe. Agree. But I remember when Germany stopped France, and Germany, like, didn't move into the North Sea to attack France, and, like, didn't move into English Channel on time or whatever, right? Hmm. Remember when how these were the fights went? Like, I think this is just how they attack each other. They just, like, give them a gentlemanly, like, half year to get ready for the war and then be, like, go after the territories that matter. It's like, we duel at dawn, good sir. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I shall approach like, the North Sea no earlier than midnight. Yeah, it's like, you can only stay in the North Sea for half a year, right? <laughs> Any unit that's in the North Sea is not allowed to stay. Yep. Uh, it's like a special rules variant. Um... Shall we move ahead and see what happens in the fall here? Let's do it. Okay. Fall 1929. And they are clearly still at war, so my, my prediction... Oh, no, wait. Cilicia moved back, but I suppose actually that's just pure defense. Um, the... Yeah, they are still at war. My prediction is incorrect. <laughs> And Germany... Germany goes plus one but doesn't get to build because they also go minus one from Venice. Um, right. So what do you want to talk about first? Well, Italy ended up in a GNC rather than taking Tunis, trying Aww. to go plus two. <laughs> Come on. Take Tunis in that situation. You want to go up to four, surely. Tunis uh, would have been so nice. <laughs> That position for Italy here, when there is just like no hostile units around, would have been amazing. Yeah, I think they really overvalued that. Like, even if the Austrian is saying things like, I'm going to be mad at you if you take Tunis, he's still just going to disband North, North Africa 
Um, yeah, and then you're going to build a fleet Naples Army Realm, and if he really wants to attack you, then sure, you're happy to put Naples into Apulia, into the Adriatic, and then Ionian. It, it's just going to be fine. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now that North Africa fleet is going to come back, because the Russian fleet is not at Mid-Atlantic Ocean anymore, and you've missed your opportunity. Um, yes. And then for France, France should have... Uh, required the support into mid-atlantic ocean be from portugal not spain south coast because mm. spain south coast is better than portugal yep i mean they do go into spain so actually the uh the western mediterranean this fleet i think goes to land for the first time since it's been in syria this great journey yeah. um it has now reached spain it, it, it is the chosen yeah. one and like look i would love for that actually there's there's some important churches in Spain. <laughs> this right? is true. Is there like an important one in like Santiago? Or crazy? Yeah. Uh, um. I well. I mean. I. I'm a not. Lot of, I'm not uh... there. We have to. It has to go into like London. And take some chapels there, right? I think. Well, there are definitely cathedrals in in Spain. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you're doing the grand tour. It's got to visit all. Oh of yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of churches in Europe, man. You have to go to every supply center. <laughs> True. We're talking about the big... Oh, Mr. Rome. It's got to go back to Rome. What are we talking about? <laughs> the mis- the yes. big one. How can you establish yourself as the new papal state if you don't have Rome? This is... Well, he's, he's literally the Pope. He's the Pope's escort. He just, like, forgot to visit Rome. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, the Pope's just there waving, <laughs> like, hey, pick me up, please. You forgot about you me. forgot me. <laughs> also, I just realized how slow these boats are. Wait a minute. I just, my sense of scale, hold up. It literally takes two and a half years to use these boats to go from Spain to Syria. Yep. That literally takes two and a half years? How big is the Mediterranean? It takes a full year to get from the tip of North Africa to Spain as well. This is, uh, like... (laughs) Okay, so let me blow your mind here. If we're talking about this in terms of actual military strategy, how come a fleet can only move from Tyrrhenian Sea to Ionian Sea in one turn, but an army can go from Syria to St. Petersburg in half a year? It's just being... Yeah, convoys make the fleet super fast. (laughs) Yeah, dude, there's just a bunch of fleets, man. So... So my theory for this is that each fleet goes to the corner of its province, right? The first fleet picks up the crew. Sorry, the first fleet initially deposits its crew on the other, like, in the sea, and they just go and swim over to the next fleet. And the army that's in the original province of the convoy then takes over the first fleet and starts, like, driving the boats. And each so fleet's crew switched to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the only way it makes sense, right? <laughs> Does that make sense, meme? That right there is the. <laughs> okay, it's it's it makes more sense than this fleet. This army suddenly got super fast all the way through all of these fleets and got to Saint Petersburg, even though they can only move one province in half a turn. Sorry, one province in half a year. What if um, they have super special bike pedal motors, and all of the people in the army start biking really <laughs> hard, and then that just like propellers and just has them go real fast? Oh, uh, man, this is so. <laughs> this is what happens when we get like three and a half hours into the commentary, right? <laughs> I don't even think we're that far in. I think we're like two hours and... now nah, we're probably close to three hours We're probably now. close to three hours, yeah. Like, it's um, also like, there's nothing is happening again, right? Like, we're seeing these people make these nonsensical war moves against each other, right? Like, Italy not taking Tunis when Italy should be going for... Right? Like... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not as nonsensical as some of the moves we've seen. I think it's fine to stay on three. It's just not as good as going up to four. Um... <laughs> Just like dot. a muscle for life. It's a dot. <laughs> yep. Like, what did we think was gonna happen, man? Oh, what happened? <laughs> All right. Um. So, other things that happen: the Mid Atlantic Ocean forces English Channel. Um. The 
Russians get into North Sea, they do not extend the same courtesy that uh, that the Germans do. And the Germans really don't care about North Sea. They supported whole Denmark over double supporting into North, which would have... Yeah, because Denmark is a dot. I respect the dot. Okay. <laughs> but, they, yeah, okay, so they were guessing that Russia would cover Sweden and double attack uh, Denmark. Um, yeah, either cover Sweden or um, or just double attack Denmark, and then you bounce them out of the North Sea, and that's still probably okay. Mm. It's just this order sequence from Russia punished. Yeah. Um, and yeah, suddenly Russia has not a big upper hand, I think. It's still not great a great position, but these fleets are in a solid position. Sorry, or yeah, a more solid position than they were. Um, in On land from Russia to really capitalize on it. Like, this fleet in the Baltic is the most aggressively positioned fleet, and it really needs an army in Prussia and or Silesia to capitalize. Yeah, I really think Baltic is going to go back to Sweden, because that makes more sense than it's staying in Baltic right now. Um, yeah, I mean, like, again, we can go back to all the years ago, right, when I was in Gulf of Bothnia, and I was like, hmm, one of these two fleets should have gone to Sweden. Yep. And I guess it was supposed to be Bothnia. Yep. Um, right, and the other big thing that happens is uh, Russia's forces Galicia. Uh, Austria apparently, well, looks like they misordered on that, but it doesn't really matter because uh, they didn't have enough supports anyway. Um, but the Italian fleet being in Aegean gives Russia a little bit to worry about, at least. It is kind of this yep. this weird AI T um, against R instead of the AI against uh, RT that we see at the start of the game. But it's the same sort of position you see. <laughs> it's, it's very much the same sort of position you see. Except, <laughs> except for the Austrian fleets Russia. in North Africa. <laughs> yeah, but just ignore that, right? If you just yeah. look at this... It's just, it's just, yeah, it's Austria plus Italy against Russia and Turkey. It just happens to be that Russia has assimilated Turkey, except for the lone defect. Yep. Um, so, well, shall we see how this war pans out? Well, first we need to see the builds. Yeah, we're going to see, like, Fleet Naples. Uh, yep, Fleet Naples. Well, I didn't even realize Austria had to disband here. They lost Romania, of course. Um, they decide not to take off North Africa. Despite the uh, the apparent uselessness of that unit. <laughs> well, it protects Tunis, right? Yeah. I, I guarantee you that if Naples had, if Ionian had taken Tunis last turn, that fleet would be off the board. Yep, and that's what but you would now, want to see as Italy. Yeah, but now taking Tunis is just never. It, you need to get use both fleets for it again, and if you move both fleets there, it just feels bad. Yeah. Okay, so Army Sevastopol as a build, it, it, it's probably, it might be correct. I don't know how many units Russia needs down there. It feels a bit bad to have it stuck behind everything else, though. Um, yeah, I'd be way more tempted to go Army Moscow, get yeah. a cool pony on Russia, or St. Petersburg, Norway. I bet if you're doing that, you probably build in St. Petersburg and then go to Norway. Yeah, this is the sort of one that prepares for making peace with Germany, but I called that before and it didn't happen, so <laughs> not going to rest uh, much hope on that. Um, shall we go to spring? Sure. Okay, well, this is the final year we'll be covering in this um, episode, and we see a French NMR. Not amazingly, uh, that doesn't change anything really. Um, except that the Russian fleet would have gotten dislodged from English Channel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And thank potentially move into Western Med as well for pressure on Tunis, but unlikely. Yeah. Um, thankfully, no one else is, has NMR'd here, and we see this traditional war between. Uh, AI and RT, except it's AI, R, sorry, AIT and uh, R, um, and Austria loses the guess on this front. This does tend to be a bit of a guessy thing. Uh, plus, Germany decides not to take this Austrian support into Galicia, tries to self-bounce Cilicia instead, and Russia predicts it correctly, 
supports <laughs> the uh, the German up to Bohemia and gets into Bohemia themselves. Um, yeah. The misguess from Austria in the south is not the most punishing because Serbia is a guaranteed recapture and because of the bounce out of Romania, Vienna can support hold Budapest. So Austria can get back to this spot quite safely. It just requires a GNC to cut Bulgaria as well to ensure yes. they just get back to this exact spot. So they don't make any progress, but they don't lose anything either. Um, the Austrian fleet coming back to Tunis now, as you predicted, it's just there to defend that, and it's at least probably not going to be as happy as they would be if they had it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and this uh, this Russian army move into Armenia is kind of interesting. Do they need that? Gonna be the Italian fleet in Eastern Med, right? And so you want to get the army in Syria to support hold Smyrna. Yeah. And Khan keeps supporting Bulgaria. And Romania keeps supporting Bulgaria. But then you still lose Bulgaria eventually. But not if you're in Bohemia and Galicia. I think it's fine. I think it would have been a lot better if it had supported the move to Romania. But we, like, as we know now, then yeah. <laughs> that's with totally hindsight. Definitely. And there's so much guesswork in these types of positions, it's really hard to say. Yep. Uh, what do you think about the successful support into Cilicia plus the move to Bohemia over here? That's got to be quite big here, right? Getting behind the Austrian line. Yeah. It would be bigger if Sevastopol wasn't in Armenia, because then um, Sevastopol could go to Armenia while Ukraine goes to Galicia. Because Cilicia is going to keep Warsaw pinned down. Um, so this army in Bohemia is looks, just looks a lot like it could have been an army in Galicia, and I think you'd rather have an army in Galicia. Yeah. So, <laughs> I almost feel like we're talking about the start of the game now, because it is so similar to what happens at the start of most of the games. Usually, in this kind of AI versus RT, what happens is Russia can get around Austria, right? Um, to get a slight advantage on them. Italy can get around Turkey to get a slight advantage on them. So Turkey and Austria suffer while Russia and Italy grow. Which yeah, is great for Russia, weird... but yeah. yeah. There's so... some circumstances where like Venice goes through Tyrol and the Bohemia. Yes. And then... does some stuff to stop the outflanking. Similar to their times where Turkey can hold Syria and stop the Italian outflank. And in those situations, it usually just ends in a flat-out draw, with no side gaining an edge. Yes. Um, obviously, like, the downside for Russia here is, usually in that position, you're happy as Russia, because your ally is the one getting weaker while you're getting stronger. But now, <laughs> it's just Russia getting weaker while Russia yeah. gets stronger. Russia all um, the way down. Yep. Yep. Um, the most you can hope to do is unbalance this alliance by knocking the Austrian down until they have to run at the Italian, right? But um, if, you're, if you're already doing that, you're winning. Yep. Right. That's true. Um, and I think if you want to do that, you don't send the unit to Armenia. You just let Turkey... Or you say, okay, I'm probably going to lose Turkey long-term. I'll just go all in on weakening the Austrian right now. Um, yeah. Let's see the uh, the last. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Do we need yeah. to talk about the moves on North Sea? Uh, Germany well, doesn't make it in. Nothing yeah, nothing really. Germany could I have gotten in. Germany, yeah, oh yeah, tons of um, things could have happened, but the only thing that happened was Irish Sea to Wales. Okay, that's, sure. That's what matters. All right, Irish Sea to Wales, <laughs> the North stayed put. Feel free right, to look so. at them afterwards. I'll send them a, a snapshot of the order sheets. Anyone is free to look at it afterwards. But, like, man, there was a bunch of nonsense and no one did anything. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, let's go ahead to fall 1930 then. Um, last movement phase we're covering. And as you said, uh, Serbia is getting forced, um, tries to evac to Romania and fails. And uh, this unit in Armenia decides to come out to. Um, to Smyrna, plus the fleet moving to Eastern Med, which, I mean, it's interesting. It doesn't seem amazing, uh, because you've still only got the one fleet there. Yeah, I mean, Eastern Med was supposed to bounce Ionian to Eastern Med, right? 
Right, yeah. I assume that was the plan. But then why did you want Armenia to stay in Armenia instead of going to Smyrna, Syria? I'm not really sure. But yeah. that's what happened. Um, so perhaps the most interesting move in the south is Ionian to Adriatic instead of to, um, to Eastern Mediterranean. Yeah, coupled with Apulia to Venice, it looks significantly anti-Austrian. But I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. I think it's to try and force the Austrian fleet to take the lead on this attack instead of being behind the line, right? Um, sure. But I'm the, support it Eastern Med, of course. The way they've moved here, Austria could potentially just grab Naples next year, right? Yes. Um, it would probably be a bad idea given they're fighting Russia, but you don't know what, what's going to happen by Naples next year. for Trieste. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I don't think you want to do that trade. I think if you're trading anything for Trieste, you want to trade like either Venice or Rome for Trieste, right? Because you don't oh, want to take the Italian Austria fleet builder. That. But like, <laughs> mm. I don't know. If I'm Italy, I could say, you know what, Austria? I don't want you building any more fleets. I'm going to take Trieste. You're welcome to take Naples. Yeah, but do you want to lose Naples as a build center as, as Italy? That feels like a huge disadvantage. It um, does suck, but stopping Austria from ever building a fleet's an upside. Yeah, I mean it is. I um, wouldn't do it, but like I also don't believe in anything that's happened by most of these players this game. <laughs> uh, I love that we see the uh, the Russian unit continue with the outflank and get all the way around into Tyrolia. Um, Dude, which... it's the best place to be, man. <laughs> Bohemia it only borders two centers, in Tyrolia it borders four. Yeah, Tyrolia which means it's better than Bohemia. More likely to get cut, but also it can actually offer things that Bohemia couldn't, like supporting the Italian unit into Trias. Um not that they'd take it, but maybe they would. Well I guess uh we'll it see. Borders on more that. Centers, therefore it's a better spot. Yeah. Like <laughs> We've explained the house the strategic importance of territories in diplomacy is how many supply centers do you border are you a supply center yourself uh i mean yep that seems it's obviously not completely comprehensive you've also got like why are you on the stalemate line um but no one cares about the stalemate line not, not right now for sure uh and, yeah, uh, I think the big thing that tips us off that this probably isn't a stab on Austria is the fact that Aegean still cut Bulgaria and, and like, weakened the yeah. Russian. Um, otherwise, the Austrian would have had to disband... Well, no, they wouldn't, but they could have had to dis have to disband, um, and Italy would clearly want that as if they were stabbing. Uh, yeah, I mean, this ensured that Russia... that Austria was able to force off the Serbian army which is important. Yep. Um, and, like, we see <laughs> our crusading fleet has made it all the way back to the middle Atlantic Ocean now. Um, this is the furthest north this ever been, dude. I think yeah. it's longer than Marseille. Well, are we going to cheer it on all the way to St. Petersburg? It is a possibility. <laughs> I would be so stoked to watch that fleet in the middle Atlantic Ocean do all of the things. <laughs> Uh, it's fun how we've gone from France being at the top of our power rankings to cheering France's singular fleet that it might go and do something interesting. Well, it's not a singular fleet, but like one of France's three remaining fleets that it's gone all the way to a useless province and then back <laughs> without taking any centers. Dude, it hasn't even tried to take any centers, right? It took Tunis. It's moved the Eastern Med. It didn't take two. No, it, like, at the start it did. You're right. It and like it confluenced some stuff around. But like since it left Tunis, it's just moved over to Syria and back. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, this is the high quality content you watch us for. Just tracking one fleet's progress across the map. <laughs> I think it's really interesting though. Okay, so um, other things that happened here. Germany versus Russia, this war. Germany gets into North Sea. Yay! Germany loses London. Oh, They have to disband something. What do they disband? Heli Heligoland? Or maybe Brest? That's no. Sorry? 
Breast looks pretty stupid. Let's let France back in there. Right? Yeah, if you disband Breast, that's the problem, though. France just walks in, right? There's no way I mean, France doesn't walk in. What do you mean? The <laughs> Mid-Atlantic Ocean's going to St. Petersburg, man. Breast oh, is yeah, not a <laughs> of course. I, uh, I agree Breast is that's a problem, but, like, he made this decision with Venice earlier, where he this, he got rid of the army in Venice. I think army Breast feels very similarly. Yeah. I just don't think you want to let France yeah, build an army. Because, like, if France gets that centre back, they're building army Marseille and probably taking Paris as well. Um, Maybe then you disband Holland to prevent this. Yeah, especially now that North Sea is open, that otherwise yours. That seems like the right call. Um, yeah, and... but now you like actually have to hold on to the North Sea, which Germany just doesn't believe in. <laughs> Russia actually has quite a good position on the North Sea here, Edinburgh and London. Wales will have to cover Liverpool, I assume. Um, but uh, they actually they have to cover Sweden and Norway. Maybe they're finally actually going to move into Sweden instead of bouncing. Imagine if they just moved into Sweden forever ago and didn't have their cell phones in Sweden for like three years straight. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it certainly would have been better. Um... And, yeah, I mean, that's kind of all there is to cover here. I think uh, the Austrian getting into Bohemia would be a lot better if he was getting a build, right? Yeah, um, but as this is going right back to Vienna. Yep. There's... This is one of the things where I think people like moving units too much. Or, like, think about it. Would you rather your unit was in Vienna or Bohemia? Where would you rather that unit be? Vienna. If the answer is Vienna, and it already is in Vienna... You need to have it stay in Vienna. Yeah. Right? It's this... probable that this doesn't do anything, right? Because Bohemia and Vienna just self bounce with each other. But, like, if they move, this is just sad. Yeah, I think... I can't remember who told me this, but I remember when I was learning diplomacy in the first place, someone told me that the way you become a, a good player is to learn to move all your units all the time, right? And the way you become a great player is to stop moving them again. <laughs> um... <laughs> Just like, for example, you have a unit in the North Sea. It doesn't leave the North Sea. <laughs> yep. Just, just news <laughs> flash. Keep the unit in the North Sea. Oh, an interesting reason to keep Holland here is that you can actually convoy it to Yorkshire, um, which is something you can do. And that's why my instinct was to get rid of Brest. But I mean, getting eh. rid of Kiel might be the right call then. Right? Kiel or Holland? Yeah, maybe. I, I would think I think you're right. Kiel is definitely a better disband than Holland. Because like you don't need to defend Denmark. If they uh, uproot you from Denmark, then you just retreat to Sweden. Um, yeah, and you don't worry about them taking Kiel because you retake it, and they can only take it with the fleet, so you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. So I think that's decided then. Let's see if the German does that. Um, winter 1930. Uh, Holland. Okay. Well, I mean, I suppose that was your initial choice. How did the Russian get two builds? What? Oh, they got disbanded in Serbia, so they... Yeah, London plus Serbia. Yep, okay. Um, Army Sevastopol, Fleet St. Petersburg, North Coast, seems like fine. Um, I, if I'm Russia, I'd be really tempted to just find a way to squeeze out Fleet Sev. <laughs> I really uh, want that. I don't because... think you can get it there. Like... Yeah, I don't think you can. I'm just like, no, I, I want to find a way to build fleet Sevastopol. Because I need a fleet in the Black Sea to hold down Romania. Mm. <laughs> right. But yeah. Okay, Um. so... This is what the board looks like. This is what the board looks like. That army in Tyrolia, I think, is maybe the most interesting thing on it. I want to see what that does. Um... But Russia successfully forming this line against their opposition right now with one unit behind it is quite strong. In the north they look a lot less strong, uh, but still in a decent position. And they have 14 centers. I think that leaves them on top of our power rankings, yes? I mean, clearly on top. They've got six centers more than Germany. Yep, okay. <laughs> look, I'm trying to find talking points. Uh, yeah, the talking points is nothing changed. <laughs> okay, so Germany stays in second. Yeah, Austria. Is Austria still in third, or is France now in third? 
Austria well, does Austria have two more senses. France has three, but for once in our lives, France has absolutely no pressure. Yep. Uh, I'd say if Brest had been taken off the board, then France would 100% have been above Austria. But here, I'm not certain, because I don't see their growth. Um, well, they sort of walk in the Norwegian Sea, right? <laughs> there is a fleet in St. Petersburg North Coast now, so... Alright, then they walk into Clyde. Mm, and then their, their crusading fleet comes up to Irish Sea and goes to Liverpool. Man, going yeah. from exotic, like, Syria to Liverpool... Gonna be like a downgrade. Probably. <laughs> I say this as someone who lives in the Liverpool province, so uh, I'm allowed to. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to disparage Liverpool. Yeah, I'm just uh, an American. I can't say anything about any of these. <laughs> uh, All right. I think this is a good, uh, good stopping point. Yep. So our power rankings haven't really changed. Then we've still got Austria above France. I, I have it that way. I think it's plausible that Austria can yoink out Bulgaria this turn, right? Yep. Uh, and that's just going to be an extra build. Do we still have um, France above Italy? I think we probably do, just because Italy didn't take Tunis. And because France has fewer, has has even less pressure, right? That yep. theoretical army in Tyrolia could pressure Venice. Oh my god, Tyrolia goes to Piedmont and takes Marseille. <laughs> Oh, that would be so good. Oh my god. <laughs> Italy has to cover that. Italy, I think, literally needs to do that to stop a solo. Oh boy. I think Venice needs to go to Piedmont and Adriatic needs to cover Venice. Well, okay, yeah. So this would be so much better for Italy if they'd have taken Tunis. They could have put an army here and then none of this would be a problem. But uh, yeah. Yeah, they would have covered Piedmont with an army and then the army of they built the Rome would have gone to Venice and then like... <laughs> whatever, man. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. So, uh, so we are going to leave it here then. Um, right. I Unless you've got anything more to talk about here. These are I our final power rankings. Sorry? I would like to tear out my eyeballs. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it a couple days until we do the next one, right? <laughs> well, a little while. Um, so, but yes, we are through to 1930 of this hundred and something year game. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that episode and our rambling and our crying at some of these horrendous blunders and, and amusing moves. Um, and we'll see you in the next one.